Good evening. This is the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for August 26, 2020. And it's just 6 p.m. tonight at um, the main meeting room and municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Normally meetings are held at the municipal office with um, that are being, we are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access. And where required, public participation provided in accordance with governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A, section 20, broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. The remote con meeting connection again. below is the dial-in number, 312-626-6799 or 929-205-6099. The meeting ID number is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. Um, I just want to say that we had a mess up tonight on on the being able to um, connect. So I am here in the meeting room by myself, and uh, Dave is in one of the conference rooms, and Trevor is um, in another conference room. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can have hear the phones, uh, people on the phones participating. Um, I'm not sure how that works, but. Uh, I just wanted to say we it had, was pointed out correctly uh, that last week um, we were not being safe, completely safe at our last meeting. I, I am harping at everyone to wipe everything down, to wear your masks, um, it, and we have now barriers for when the three of us are back here together. Um, but we did not, and this is one of the things why the virus is able to be transmitted and is still percolating along is because people do feel comfortable with each other. John Pachorek and Barbara Hancock, our town clerk, have, you know, have been working together in the town hall right along. And so they didn't wipe down the tables in between. And we should have had them wipe down the tables, even though they have been working in the same building together. It doesn't matter. It is correct. And I want to apologize for us having a lack of, um, I mean, we just we got too casual on that. So we need to pay attention more. And you have to be on your game so that we can beat COVID and we can keep our kids safe. So um, I'm actually not wearing a mask because there's no one else in this room. But um, we have been having masks right here. So when we go to look at the zoning map, we can all put our masks back on. But um, so thank you for pointing it out to us. We, you know, it didn't even register. So I just want to thank our audience for um, paying attention and listening to what we have to say, because we do want people to be protected. So our scheduled appearances tonight. Um, Casey, did we have Matt Plopkin coming in or not? I haven't heard from him and I don't see, I don't think he's called in. Um, his lawyer submitted the letter that's in your packet. Um, and basically details the request that they have to amend the host community agreement between the town of Deerfield and Deerfield Naturals to make a change to the location of the marijuana establishment from, is it nine? 10 Greenfield Road. No, 10, 10 Greenfield Road, that's right, to 26 Greenfield Road. It's just an adjoining property and, and is. Mark Malone is still the um, owner. So I'm, I'm actually not um, concerned about it. I would like the, our lawyers to review it. So um, uh, Dave and Trevor, if you're okay with it, I would entertain a motion to sign it pending council review. And then we just come in and sign it at our convenience. Is that all right? I'd make that motion. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. Is there any further discussion? No, I don't see an issue, real issue with it because it's already within our zoning uh, marijuana district. Right. It's in the current district. It's just 
um, the Deerfield Naturals is going to rent from Mark Vallone's property. Yeah. I mean, he mm -hmm. is the owner. Okay. Yeah. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Um, select board announcements. I just want to mention that uh, John Pachorek, our chief, police chief, and Jen Bartik will will we'll come in. They were planning to come in this meeting, but there actually has been no action uh, further or further information on the police reform bill. So um, we'll, we'll have them come in at a later meeting because I we want to stay on top of that um, for, and we want to be able to budget whatever, whatever comes of that. We want to make sure we have adequate budget to um, make sure we stay on top of um, whatever we need to. And, they, and we keep talking about it because I think it's important. Hasn't gone away. More incidents are having, so we need to pay attention. Um, is there anything else, Trevor or Dave, did you have announcements? Um, well, I just uh, hit on one thing was, um, so I had a meeting with Linda Dunlevy today at the Fur Clog because um, I'm chairing the council this year. And um, just a little bit on the radio and the, you know, the emergency radio ch yes. change. Um, so the uh, this you know the EOPS is is looking for uh, I don't even have the acronym right but <laughs> the the state entity that's doing all of that. Um, no, it is, is the EOPS. It is, it is EOPS, EOPS yeah. right? Yeah. So they're looking to do um, uh, what is it called? A memorandum of understanding and MOU. I don't think it's an MOU. It's an MO, MOA or something or. They wanted to under, uh, They wanted to have an agreement. An IMA. IMA. Yeah, an agreement between. Um, so they they want to have FERCOG as as the center. Yes. Uh, for for communication between yes. all the twenty six towns and this entity because the it's, intersect. They want to be the intersect, right, Trevor? There you are. Trevor, we can't hear you. Trevor, we can't hear you. Stop and repeat yourself. Did she get, did he get, um, on, he got muted for some reason. He uh, doesn't say muted. He's not muted, but for some reason his audio isn't working. Yeah. Hold on, I'll go check with him. Oh, hey, I, now can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'm really I don't know sorry. For some reason, this laptop keeps every 15 seconds or so or 20 a minute, it mutes me and it shuts off my mic. So we'll have to figure out that setting. I think that's happening to David too. So Yeah. So there must be a setting there where it shuts off every every minute or two minutes. It's, this it's, keep our meeting short. This <laughs> shut oh, off every setting. time. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep it open and move it around. I think I'm the one that's supposed to have that shut off, automatic shut off. <laughs> so click in there and look at... If you click on the up button next to mute, it'll give you audio setting. Oh, but I think it's the uh, I think it's the actual. Um, Going to Trevor, you need to put your mask on. Yeah, we, you, I'm, you, you, I'm, I'm good. I got it. We'll figure it out later. All right. <laughs> I got so it. If she, once she leaves, once she leaves, you don't have. But we got we can't do this. We can't. We got to pay attention. Yeah, okay. I just, I, I'm I'm good. I'm just so we got right, now. Fix. Now you can take your mask off because she's not in the room any longer. Okay. All right. So um, before I go mute again, <laughs> um, we just we, we just want the 26 towns. Uh, I think the FERCOG is looking to be that interop interopportunity, the, the, the one conduit for all that information. So there'll be an MOU that we really need to get all 26 towns to sign and get back. And then that then they can sign and get back with the state. So then they can release the grant money because then we have to order all the all the radios and then get them in and get them programmed and get them tested and up. And there's not a lot of time to do that. I know a lot of people are hoping to jump on but by January 1st. It may be February by the time we get all that done. But the sooner we get the MOUs done or... M so do you, want, um, do you want us to make a motion, Trevor, to a, a, make a motion to sign it? It did it again. Not yet, um, but I, I think um, that will be coming soon. They're, they're working on that language right now. Their attorneys are looking at it, just to make sure okay. everything's good, and then they'll get it out to us. And they'll, they'll have a, a large public meeting again. I mean, it'll be on Zoom, but there'll be a large meeting again, just so everybody is aware. I just wanted to bring it up that, that they're looking to kind of get this done 
and get it figured out pretty quickly. But um, no, we have to. It's um, more than a million dollar savings for the whole county. And, absolutely. Um, it's it's huge. It, it really cuts our operating costs and, and it gives yep. us an upgrade in radio coverage. And we're not right. on the hook for the expenses. So it's a win win. John Pachorik has been spearheading it. Um, and we want to say thank you for the chief because he's having a direct impact on reducing yep. the operating budget for the entire county every town right. is going to be saving tons of money and when i say tons of money like 30 40 50 thousand dollars per town and um and then we're not going to have repair costs uh, we we would have um, been on the hook for millions which we just can't afford so uh kudos to john pachork for this um anything else dave did you have anything uh the only thing i want to bring up and it's no direct uh, effect on Deerfield, but we've got that category four hurricane that's going to be hitting the coast and hitting Louisiana very hard, uh, mm -hmm. parts of Texas and some of Mississippi. I have a niece in Mississippi at the University of Alabama. So um, it's, uh, it's the worst storm ever to hit that area. It's, it's be going bad. to be a category four when it actually hits and it's, it's got a st storm surge of over 20 feet. So um, it's really devastating. And, you know, with COVID being rampant down in that area. It's going to be awful. Uh, it's, uh, I can't even imagine. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, for those that in town that have relatives. Okay. Now my light's shut off. <laughs> Wave your hand. Oh Wave God, your hand. Good tonight. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that room is sometimes difficult to work in. I know oh, yeah. sometimes they, they treat us like mushrooms, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that happy note, let me tell you, the mosquitoes have been active and then not active. We've been getting really erratic catching. We get, we get a, a large number and then we have almost none. So this is very highly unusual. Um, and also for the first time in eight years, here we are in August and um, we're, we have no disease. So for the first time since we've been um, trapping mosquitoes, there's been no uh, West Nile disease. And even though Tripoli e is becoming more prevalent around us, nothing is happening here. So I just wanna say, um, and I'm in uh, contact as a commissioner, I'm in contact almost daily with our um, um, supervisor and it, it seems to be working really well. So um, that's pretty exciting. Good news, at least a little bit. Um, other Board of Health um, information is the regional factors have just been released by DPH um, to help us uh, decide whether school is safe to open schools or not. And guess what? They need to be revised and retweaked for our area because they're not, I, I don't feel comfortable with them. So we're working on it um, and we'll hopefully have it done in another week or so. Um, there's a lot, everyone is cooperating. We have a lot of towns that are um, working together and we're gonna try to figure out what we're gonna do. Um, we've all been extremely busy. <sighs> well, we know the, DPH calls are weekly, um, Board of Health calls and, and county calls, our health district calls, everybody is work, working really hard. We had a wonderful planning meeting, our emergency dispensing site meeting last Thursday, even though my Zoom was going in and out and I was, uh, people couldn't hear all the time, but it was very productive. We have uh, two meetings scheduled for next week, um, planning meetings, um, and uh, we have a training meeting set for September 26th. I mean, September 22nd. That's Tuesday, September 22nd training. So if anyone is interested, um, Mary Lipinski, Dave's wife, is collecting um, names. And we are looking for a total of 44 volunteers, medical and non-medical. Uh, we anticipate two shifts. We want to practice two shifts. Um, because we're not sure how we're going to get the COVID vaccine and we're practicing it as if it was in the winter time. So we need um, 
people to be have experience with the situation at the highway garage. So if you're all interested in volunteering, please contact our selectman's office, or if you know Mary, uh, contact her direct. And um, so you can be signed up for our training on September 22nd, because I, it's very important that um, Zach, our um, EMS, Zach Smith, our EMS director, will be doing um, PPE training and safety. He's our safety officer for the um, event, and it's very important that we um, uh, get sorted out. Okay, is there anything else, Trevor, you wanted to add, or Dave? Well, there was something uh, you had in the, and you may be hitting on this next, but in the, um, uh, in the packet about the um, source to see. Um, oh, yes, I hadn't gotten back to, the, I mean, that was. Um, yeah, I figured you would get, I just didn't know okay. if you wanted to hit on that. Yes, um, let's see, it's here. I think it's the. Um, the volunteers are invited to get dirty for cleaner rivers. It's the Connecticut River Conservancy source to see cleanup. Um, they what they're going to do this year. This will be the 24th year. It's one of the biggest uh, and most successful river cleanups in the country. Um, but everybody wants to be COVID safe. So you are. Um, this year you go to the uh, website. Uh, www.ctriver.org slash witness river witness and um, you'll see um, the cleanup at river Connecticut river dot, uh, org and you can sign up for different events and what you're gonna, what they're going to do is um, have pods it's, 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 instead of uh, it will be throughout the month of September rather than the typical two day event for you, they're going to do better social distancing, and um, so you can still track, you know, tackle the trash and have cleaner rivers and everything. But everybody's going to be um, signed up for little groups um, that, um, like, that safer groups, smaller groups, and that you can safely social distance. So, if you're at all interested, please, we'll we'll put this on our website. Um, quite a lot of cleanup is done in our town on this so this mm -hmm. is important so i'll make sure that gets on the website yeah that'd be great. Uh, carolyn yes has there been any updates on the uh flu vaccines coming in i know um, uh, cvs has them now so i didn't know if we were maybe moving well next one. actually um just today when our um we had our morning uh uh frontier call eds call this morning darius said that there was Going, you know, they were, they had just hot off the press, um, going to try to run a, a CVS or partner with CVS um, at Frontier to, to um, have a clinic there in, in the school. Because we have our normal, um, we, we haven't been giving out that many flu vaccines uh, for children. And now that it's mandatory, we're really worried that our 350 um, doses, which includes flu mist, is not enough. So we have about 1,550 students in Union 38. So um, we're trying to figure out how much extra we're going to need and the availability. You had to commit to um, the numbers in the summer, and then your order is set uh, by the end of the summer, which is now. And then um, if you want more, you can order more in the fall if you run out. Well, all our flu clinics um, are in the begin end of September, beginning of October. So if we run short, we won't have the ability to order more. So um, what we're trying to do is figure out, Lisa has already sent mem memo in and um, requesting more. And we have requested more on numerous phone calls. So we're hoping to come up with more than the 350, um, because like I said, we have 1,550 kids in our district, so. And, and people can, like, you know, people can take their kids to their primary care and CVS yes. and other things, so it's not only through us that you can get it, so please, you know, try all those it's other just, areas It's just well. what was concerning this year is a lot of the um, doctor's appointments are through telemedicine. Right. And they're actually not going into the offices, and that's generally, when a large percentage of the kids, they go in for their um, physical and, and their Board updating checkup. of their vaccine. And oh, by the way, how about a flu shot? Oh yeah, yeah, no problem, you get the flu shot. 
Well, that's not actually happening this year. So we're, we're actually very concerned about the numbers. We have been working on that. That's one of the things that we're trying to do. We have adult flu vaccine for seniors on the September 30th flu clinic. And then we'll have our drive through at the highway garage on October 4th, which is a Sunday, Sunday, October 4th. It's not a misprint. It is a Sunday. Um, and we're going, because we needed to do that when there was nobody in the highway garage and also at pilot. So um, we're hoping uh, people will participate. We have over a thousand doses of um, vaccine in total. So hopefully we'll have a good turnout and we can mm -hmm. practice. Um, uh, and we're, we're setting it up as if we were running a COVID in the winter. So I come. And I, have, um, I have somebody who's put their hands up and wants to speak, so. Oh, oh okay. Okay. That was me. <laughs> Oh, I'm testing hey. the raise hand function. <laughs> no, um, Jennifer had a really good question. Should the school send out a note to families to have them contact their doctors to see if they can coordinate shots too, just as a way to make sure we hit as many people as we can? I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think most parents are, are aware of it because it's, it's, you know, there's obviously there's some pushback because this was all of a sudden. I mean, if we knew... Yeah this just even a few weeks ago, of course, we would have ordered, you know, more children's vaccine. Um, be a good reminder if the schools can yeah. say, you know, this is, this is something you need to plan. Would have, yeah, gotten at your regular um, meeting, but it was, you know, since everybody was doing their physicals, you know, um, remotely, you know, to, to contact your healthcare provider, just you know, we're, we're trying to figure out how many kids in general get their flu through the primary care, and there's no real way for us to survey that. We're, we're roughly estimating it might be four or 500, and then we do another three or 400 normally. So, you know, somewhere around there, um, or 300 ish is, I think, what our normal is. And so, but that leaves at least 700 other are not accounted for. And uh, of course, you're going to have a percentage that, you know, are saying, no, we're not going to do the flu shot, mm -hmm. which is fine. But um, uh, there's still a gap and we need to make sure that we have enough vaccine. So uh, we're working on it yeah. and we're trying to be, um, we're trying to help everybody as much as possible. So yep. uh, it's just one more thing. It's one, it's one more thing on our list that we're working on. Um, is there anything else, Casey? Casey, you have your re the reopening plan. I do. Um, I do. Do you want to just touch on that a little bit? Because um, I don't really see another place for us to talk about it. So, yeah. So it was actually there um, on purpose because what I did was in going through and clarifying some of the questions that the select board members had last week, I made those changes. I ran right. them past Richard. Um, but I added one thing in the, um, in the appendices, which is, it's actually an employee certification report, a daily reporting form. So, um, department log. So basically it allows people to, in their normal course of work, you're not coming back to work from an issue, but in your normal course of, course of work, you're just self-certifying when you come in. So I just wanted the board to recognize that I had I had added that appendix. It goes with your it goes with your self certification of symptoms, the idea of doing that self certification, but on a regular basis, so that we have a tracking log. It's something that Dick had mentioned to me in a different context, so I thought I'd throw that in. So if you guys are all set with that, if you have no more changes, these were the things that you asked me to change. There were a couple clarifications we got from council that resulted in and inter that were from interpretations from the Federal Family Coronavirus um, Relief Act that, you know, David had asked a question about it being only used once. Well, the interpretation is actually it can be used successful successively. So we didn't add a sentence about that. So I just wanted everybody to bless me, go forth and, and oh. advise everyone they need to start working on their plans. <laughs> Before I before I bless, That's okay. <laughs> um, I have a question about the efficiency and implementation of a daily log for every employee. Like, do we have we thought about? 
can they do it electronically? Is there, um, do, do, does everybody go to one spot and punch a clock every day? No, or they each them? have a copy. They each have a copy in the office. They can sign up in their offices. I see. And have, so and basically then, you post the log in the office and people that are in and out of the office just um, it, note it their is, name, yeah. their department. It, it'll take less than a minute. Okay. It just gives us a way to track. And how long do we, tr is this a weekly thing? And then we're, it just hangs out in that office. If yeah. we have access to it, we have access to it. Okay. Right. What, it, what this sure does that. is formalize what we've asked our employees to do was mm -hmm. to take right. extra precautions. We've kept the town hall fairly closed down um, just so that none, none of our workers are, are at risk. And, and because of that, we're, you know, we haven't had any issues, but also I think it's also very, it has been very effective um, in reminding people because you, you do um, just get blacks because, you know, you're around and it, and you just, that's what happens. It's human nature. So I'm holding reminding... a mask up for a reason. Because she's right. Right. No, it, it is. And, and as, a per, as a person who was watching points it out, you cannot preach. Here you are preaching to the choir. Please, please wear your mask. And then we, then we end up, you know. Oh, I, I get that. I was just like, thinking. Yeah. The idea is no to trigger, the idea is to trigger every day a reminder that we have to stay on our game. We have to be careful. And we are asking our employees to be extra careful. And um, I was just, I was just thinking of efficiency as far as electronic. If everybody doesn't go to the same spot every day, they're on the road, they're in the truck, they're out. The only the other way moment. they could do that is to send an email. That's the only other way they could do that because we don't have a universal login system for people to do payroll and stuff. So we don't have, some towns do that. They can just right. do their checklist that way. We don't have that ability. And, and also we don't, no we don't want to spend on. any more money for the, the application. No, and I get that. I was thinking yeah. maybe is there a Google form or some other way that wasn't, I mean, it's, I'm, you can, I'm good you can with buy, it. I'm happy. I just want to make sure it's efficient. Yeah, you can buy the app. You can buy the check, the app that reports in who, who isn't and who is not doing it. So you have like a percentage of your workforce that is either doing it or not. And it, I mean, we just don't have a lot enough people and and you don't want to pay more money. And that means one more thing for Casey to do. This is, this is localized in every office. And, you know, people are just responsible for themselves. I mean, I can ask if, if people can't get somewhere. I mean, for instance, transfer station. They go up to the transfer station and they don't really leave. But there's no reason they can't have this there with a pen and just, you know. Sign off. They have yeah. gloves on a lot. So yeah. do, do the quick sign in or do the quick signature. And Bob's your uncle, as one of my bosses used to say. Um, if we can, uh, not everybody has a cell phone either that's right. workable, like a smartphone. So yeah. believe it or not. <laughs> I know. Well, well I so, and also, and then, like then that, also okay. we have to have I'm those good. apps. I think those apps are very invasive. I'm sorry. I think I'd rather have, I'd rather have the hard paper. So whatever. Anyway. So for purposes of moving forward with the reopening plan, I'm going to send this out to the department heads, especially the ones that um, have different sites because things like the library, I know John's already got a plan. He hasn't necessarily given it to me in writing, but probably John and Zach have one. I had already talked to Kevin. He has one. He just needs to enumerate the steps because he's got right. different um, functional areas. So I'm going to send this out and say, look, this is kind of the format you need to use um, to develop your plan and you need to get it into me before you open because Dick has to look at it. And if Dick has questions, he'll probably send it to the Board of Health mm -hmm. if there's an issue. Okay. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. That's been my understanding with him before. So if, you know, if we're I mean, all set with this, then I'll push it out and say, okay, start working on your plan so that you can formalize what you're doing. That's really what we're doing is formalizing the fact that we're now working appointment only. Right. And I talk to Dick every single day. We handle yeah. the complaints. We handle, um, you know, any of the investigations. So it's, it's absolutely okay. If, I mean, we have communication. So if there's any issues, I'll know about it. Are you okay with that, guys? Because yes, she really has been the point person. 
to really oh, work totally. with Dick on yeah, these no, questions. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Yep. Okay. It's absolutely yeah, right. I still have a concern with that 80 hour because every other or every month somebody could come and say, I've got COVID-19 and there's nothing there saying that they have to have a definitive test saying they're positive. In order for them to come back to work, they have to have it. Yes, I know, but they could be out two weeks paid. If they use all of that FFCRA money, they're done. They, have, they only get paid according to the FMLA, um, the emergency FMLA, which is, I sent you Kate's ex explanation about this. Um, the other option is the two thirds pay um, through the emergency FMLA act, which I means- I have it here somewhere. Yeah, which means, so you get the allocation, but a lot of people are using it um, successfully, successively. So they're using it uh, FFCRA. So the Federal Family, or the Families Federal Corona Act. That two weeks can be used over successive time frames. Once you use it up, you're done. Okay, that's what the, I was The doing. other piece is, is, so if you use that up and you use all your paid time up, then you can move to the emergency FMLA leave but you only get a certain amount of that leave. So um, people should be cautious and they should be talking to us about these things. And that's one of the things we're trying to encourage is them to talk to us if they've got problems so we can work it out. I mean, I had three emails on my HR group today about how you're allocating work. A lot of people are trying to help employees limit their use of their own time or this FFCRA time and work remotely, but those tasks need to come back as accomplishments. So there's that, that connectivity that needs to happen between the supervisor and the employee and also what tasks can be handled because some departments have a harder time assigning remote tasks. You know, so are there trainings that can uh -oh. be done to bring you up to date, that sort of thing. Yeah. So does that, answer the question yeah or do you want to that, talk to kate directly i mean that well, that was no, the purpose it's just you know we got enough legal expenses without everybody calling kate yeah um, it's just that you know when people aren't here we can also hold people accountable because you know that's been a big problem throughout the state and people so that's are taking what... time off for covid or and they're just not accountable for anything and so what you work out with your supervisor is your task list. What are you going to be doing? Yeah. And getting a response back. So when you do have an issue, one of the things that's been helpful for us is distilling those task requests to emails and asking for a response when they're completed. Okay. Or in some cases, when somebody's working remotely but can uh, virtual private network into their computer and they start printing things, you know it's been done. Because you have, they they send you an email and say, "Hey, go sign this." <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's that type of connectivity. But to your point, David, it's on the department head or supervisor to make sure that that's happening. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for your work on this. I, I yeah. Really thank you. I had a lot of help from a lot of people, so yep. I must thank other thank people, you and your suggestions have helped too. Good. 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 Okay, um, is, Trevor, was there anything else you wanted to say about schools before we move um, on? I, I just, again, I, like I could think, I couldn't thank Darius enough and their team. They are, they are working so hard under immense, you know, pressures in many different ways, just trying to get, get this plan sorted out. And, you yeah. know, every time you turn around, you get, you get hit in the face with a, <laughs> with a, cream pie and they got to figure out added how he's to had a lot of cream pies i a had a conversation with so him <laughs> just trying to you know, just trying to get it working and um no i feel like we're we're moving in the right direction it it just it takes time to get through all those items just I, I a lot of meetings it's amazing how much they're they're doing and and the staff is crunching hard and, and, and they're doing an amazing another, job another issue to deal with so no we'll get there we'll get there i think we're good okay Having sat in in too many of those meetings already, I am really impressed the amount of work that's being accomplished and has to be redone over and over again because something new has come up. Yep. It's um, very discouraging. Um, okay, moving on. Um, we have a consent item agenda. Um, let's, let's put marijuana aside for just a second sure. because that means you guys are 
going to come out and um, yeah. look at the map. So let's do the poll worker appointments. Um, Casey, I only had one that I could find. Yes. It's, it's Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Yeah. Jeffrey Remillard. Okay. Yes. I'll make a motion to appoint um, Jeffrey Remillard to be um, a poll worker for um, the duration of uh, this year. It's uh, August 26, 2020 to December 31st, 2020. I'd second that motion and thank him for his service. Yes, is there any, is there any other discussion? No, um, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Um, we'll we'll sign this. Sign at the end. Yeah, we're going to have to sign all these at the yeah, end. Yeah, so so yep. towards the end of the what you could do is just I'm going to put it in your here. vote and approved it. You could sign it at the end of the meeting. Okay. Yep. Or, you know, after because you are going to converge to look at that map. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we can sign the paperwork. Okay. Um, uh, select board policy, social media, and I uh, IT uh, policies. Did you guys have a chance to look at them this week? Uh, I not as you know, like not completely thoroughly, but I did look at them earlier, and I, I was pretty comfortable with what what what's here. Okay. Um, I know again, Casey and has done a lot of work on this, and I think you also worked with um, our police department and Adam yes. Sokolowski. Yes. Yes, I worked with several expertise. people, and, and he's done a lot of training on this. And yes. so, yeah, that was one of the reasons I looped Adam in because he has done a lot of training. I yeah. got some good advice from. John Paturk, our, our police chief. Yep. Um, it's framed, this is framed differently, both policies from the framework that the police department uses, but they have very specific, um, they have very specific focuses when they're using social media. Ours is a wider focus that covers, it's a little more vague. And I had this discussion with council when they finished reviewing it. And so, Ours is meant to allow us to communicate in the wider world, whereas the police department is communication in a very structured manner. So it mm -hmm. looks a little bit different from his, but they do yep. take elements of, of what, what John had gone through and elements I've seen from other towns. I was just gonna say, um, when you had council review it is, it, is our policy fairly in line with other towns? It's fairly, see, all, all lawyers do not agree on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Go yeah, no so some lawyers That's some law firms asking. yes so some law firms like to see social media it computer use all that stuff compiled into one policy the recommendation from lisa's staff was to identify them as separate things which is why you'll see more policies coming online mm -hmm. because it's easier for people to read one thing at a time so this correlates with communities that work with lisa's office and with her staff but it's very different from a KP law policy, which is what I started out with was a KP law policy. So that's the restructuring. I mean, what you're doing is you're splitting okay. it out and identifying specific things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just really the setup. It's not necessarily the content that's different. No, it's the setup. Okay. It's, the, it's how you're I, I, I identifying was, separate things. I guess I was more used to the KP model. Mm -hmm. um, KP's so model is all inclusive. Yeah, and so I was a little surprised that it was separate, but I mean, I was okay. What it says is fine, so. This is similar to the KP law section, but throughout the KP law policy, because I use their policy in Ashfield, throughout that policy, it's very redundant. And so that was the other thing we wanted to pull out was some of those redundancies. Yeah. Because once yeah. you say it in a specific area, that area should, clear, should be used for any intersect. That you yeah, have. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, okay. I just, it was just different, a little bit different than I was used it is. to. Seeing. You're right. Did, okay. And did I hear um, you? Dave, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. It's, uh, did it's you... a good guideline to start with. You know, we might have to tweak something here. Or we there, may have to tweak things. Those, okay. And we had a, um, once we have the policy in place, it's easy to do the tweak. Well, this is easier. This format is easier to tweak too, because it's all separate. Yeah. So um, I'm okay with it set up that way. It just was, a little bit different than I was anticipating. Um, did, okay, I'll take Trevor a motion. Trevor has a question. Trevor oh, has a question. Did, um, 
did I hear correctly that, that maybe a new Facebook page was going to be developed? Yes, we did that, that because, Good. and one of the reasons we did it is we needed to start getting information out. It, thank it you, came, yes, thank that, that person in the corner whose name is Jennifer Gannett. I said, here. I said, bless you, go forth and do good work. Um, Adam, what we did was, but it's, yeah, Adam, we had right. Adam help us the entire way. So the problem we had with the Facebook pages, the old Facebook page, we couldn't disconnect from the personal um, creation. It wasn't a business account. So we had to recreate mm -hmm. a Facebook page okay. and we did it through a business function. And Jennifer worked with Adam and every time they had a, a, a question, Adam would stop and they would talk it through because I was here listening to most of it. Um, but Adam's had significant training in this. So that was one reason we wanted his expertise. Right. And we're, what we did was we told people, hey, like our new Facebook page. But we had to figure out what that meant. So Jennifer's yeah. done an incredible amount of work. I thank both her and Adam for really getting it working. But thank you for bringing that up, Trevor, because we really need to get the word out yeah. so, that, so that we can start promoting some of the things that are happening in town through right. the business platform Facebook page. And the Absolutely. social media policy will help us be more attuned to how we should be handling it. That'd be great. Thank well, you. I also put, I didn't tell you this, Casey, maybe you saw it. I put it on our website. So there's a little blue thumbs up, you know, oh. Facebook thing, and it has yeah. a link. And that if you copy and paste that link on into your web browser, it'll bring you to our page and then you can like and share it. So, Great. Yeah. I'll and this is awesome. So, I so Mr. Facebook man, can you, can you send out some notification to Deerfield now? Absolutely. Yes. I'll get, I'll get the traffic flowing there instead. Thank I love you. That, you know? We have over 400 likes on, so that's like, if we can get up to a thousand, that's oh, really yeah. good because then we, we hit a threshold from what Adam says, but I don't remember what the threshold is. Great. <laughs> and that's, no, that's her great. job. <laughs> so Yeah, I'll ask everybody on, on Well, like thank you for taking it on it. because that's one thing that oh my god. I can't keep up. I can hardly keep up with email. Oh my god. All right. So um so thank, thank you. you we, I that. need a motion to um approve this these policies. I make a motion to approve the um, the social. First, I'll do the social media policy. Okay, I'm Dave. You, okay, is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing, Kate, hearing, Casey, I assume oh. at some point in time this will all be put into the new personnel manual that we're yes. going to be putting together. Yes, great. great That's David. exactly great. what's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Um, okay, a motion on the IT policy. Make a motion on the IT uh, to approve the IT policy as, as presented. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Great. Um, Trevor, the next thing on the um, agenda you. is the regional corporation with um, Conway. Were they going to call us in or the so we should yeah, move on. Um, I had um, I messaged um, Phil Cantor, a member of the select board. I don't know if he's on yet. He was thinking around seven is about you know that was the time frame they were thinking because you know we had a pretty heavy schedule. So if okay. anyone is on, I, we can pause now and listen. But I, I think they were thinking in a couple of you know twenty it's minutes. Not on right now. There's okay. Not on right now. No. Okay. Yep. So we can. Okay. I gave this, him the link um, so he knows how to get on. Yeah, if someone could just just pay attention, Jennifer, please. Yeah, this is about ready. the um, carbon policy. Sure, it's this is some... six forty-two. So if he was thinking seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it gives us a little time. Do you do you want me to hit on that marijuana stuff? Um, no, not yet. Let's do okay. the um, townwide tag sale. Um, Are we having it? Yes. I mean, does I don't have any problem with it having it because um, as long as people are very careful. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to set the more space between tables. But basically, when early early in May we had, um, or June, whenever it was, July, I think we had, July fourth, right? We had one. Yeah, we opened it up to yep. um, allow people to have tag sales again. And we just asked people to please make sure that there was space in between the tables so yeah. people could circulate and social distance. 
And, um, uh, you know, the governor, again, has limited some of the outside um, gatherings, but I don't, it's, it's more than it used to be. So, um, you yeah. know, I, I just be careful. Right. And, um, but I think there should be no problem with the townwide tax sale. David, do you have a problem with it? No, I don't. Okay. Let's just make a motion. Just, I'll make the motion to approve townwide tax sale um, this fall. I'll second that motion. Is um, it is usually there any further? the first weekend in October? I don't remember, Carolyn. I think it's usually well, around it's normally the, October the 3rd, um, which I don't have a problem with uh, as long as it, I mean, some tag sales go on to Sunday, but we just yeah. have our, dri you know, our, our drive through at the um, town garage. I thought it was so, the, um, um, the October, like, I mean, the... Um, uh, Columbus Day, wasn't it? Or, or Indigenous No, Day. it's usually the first weekend in October. So, um, okay, all right. Can I ask a now question about it? Sure. What? So, is the townwide tag sale like on individual people's property, and it's not in one area? Correct. Right. It's okay, on correct. individual properties. The only the only concern, and we're and we'll do the same thing we did before. Um, we we we're going to forego the five dollar tag sale fee we would just want people to call into the select board office to register yeah and and we're not so concerned about having um the gatherings like uh you know in one area like we were before we wanted to spread it out a little bit over town but um we, we will be watching for um you know that area by the highway garage on Sugarloaf Street for Sunday October 4th because that's our drive through flu clinic so um we would approve of the um, townwide tag sale for Saturday, October 3rd, if that's the first weekend that people choose. But we just would like to limit the activity on Sunday, October 4th on the Sugarloaf Street area. So if you're going to have a tag sale, please do it on Saturday and so Sunday. But yes, but call in and yeah. just register so we have an idea where the tag sales are. Again, it's a safety issue. It's just so the police have a, an idea where tag sales might be have, happening um, and there could be possible traffic issues. That's I all. I have a question. Does this go with their count of how many tag sales they can have in a year or is this like they can have it anyway? No, this doesn't count. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is town-wide yeah. and it's just extra. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Great. Um, next on the uh, agenda is our. Um, so do uh, all... we vote that? Uh, oh, oh. No, you need to... no, you had a motion. Yeah, yeah. We had a yeah motion. I made the motion. Yeah. Oh, would somebody second that? I'll second it. Great, thank you. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. So um, we actually voted in favor of that, Casey. Yep. Jen, so you can put that up, or whoever is worried about it. Um, Somebody on the call, I think, that wanted it, maybe. Anyway, uh, I, somebody I called, know. It, uh, called it. Right in now, we have Melissa Hale and Mary Byrne on the call. I don't know if they were interested in it or not. But you know what we could do, Jennifer? Um, on Monday, why don't you have Pat do deal with that? Because she has more background about it than either one of us do. Yeah, she has. Sure. Yeah. You can add it to the Facebook page, just sort of announcing and yeah. adding a note that we would prefer Saturday versus Sunday just on Sugar Because Lake. of our... Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it's the first weekend, it normally is the first weekend. In That's October. what I mean. Before we put it up on Facebook, why don't you clarify that with, with uh, Pat, just to make sure, because she remembers it better than I do. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we have contracts. We have the solid waste contract and we have the next stamp contract. All right. So let me give you the update on next stamp. We just yeah, had another exactly. call. There was a question that came up from next stamp about some language in the contract. So Beth Greenblatt and I spoke to the representative from Nexam and basically said to him, look, this is taking a long time. Tell us what you want. We're, you know, this is where the town's at. Um, why don't you take it back to your superiors and figure out how we can move forward? Because the intent is to get that Nexam contract to you guys for the ninth for approval. Okay. And if you need time, and we, I did warn, warn him, if you needed to have a conversation, because this is a contract, um, if you need to have a conversation with council and Beth Greenblatt, then we need we to be able to time. set up a, an executive session. Right. So 
Beth was pretty clear about helping me get that point across. So okay. our intent Good. is to have something for you guys to talk about on the ninth. And I won't know until a little bit further down the line how that's going to be framed. Okay. Well, she I mean, and Lisa I, and I are going to talk. Okay. I'm just, I want to make sure that it has been taking a lot of time. And because it has been taking a lot of time, I'm a little hesitant. I want to make sure we have plenty of time to review it. Okay? Right. Right. So I will make that point to Ben Axelman then. Yes. I just want to make sure we have, we have a chance to have it. If, if necessary, if, if anybody thinks there's anything that we got to really look at, then we need an executive session with our lawyers. Okay. Okay. Cause I'm you know, just the fact that they've been dragging their feet on this makes me nervous. It's something's came up, you know, there's, there's an experience. Uh, there's so there's always, an, yeah, but Casey, it's always been something. This is like, no, we, I know. I get that impression from what um, Beth has said to me. One thing that came up, one of these questions came up because of Beth's experience with another town. So what she's trying to do as, as this thing sort of has drawn out, it has given us an opportunity to anticipate things we might not have anticipated before. So right. that's, that's a benefit. Saying. On the other hand, we um, need to get it done. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing to get it done, but I want to make sure that we have a, a, the opportunity for executive session. If there's any need, if we feel, that nothing looks or something looks a little less than kosher, I guess. Okay. The best way to put it. All right. I don't so want to say that there is anything wrong. It's just no, of course not. every time yeah. we turn around, it's like some little something. Right. Okay. I, let me make myself a note to send yeah, Beth an email and then sure an email. I, you know, I want to see some money time. basically. Come on. We, we put staff time in this quite a bit and also some, you know, legal fees in it. Let's, let's start collecting on it basically. Yep. Um, um, okay. Well, solid uh, Casey, case. the next time you're talking to Beth, can you see if they can get an update on the landfill? That is, that's the next. Yeah, that's contract. the next M one. Oh, I thought the next that's one was, the one. Sorry. Yeah, I thought that was a yeah. set right one. No, no, no. Um, so that's the la that's the piece of the landfill. There's a couple of things that we were trying to work out with them, and like I said, Beth found something that she thought we needed to address that wasn't in the contract that she experienced with another town. Okay, um, well, that's good. And so I think that could be helpful. The issue is it has, it has gone on quite a while mm -hmm. and she's very aware of that. So she and I had had an email exchange about when do we think we can get this before the board. So I'm writing myself a note to send her an email tomorrow to let her know that we need a little bit, we need at least enough time for you guys to have a chance to review it and then have legal counsel re review it with you if necessary. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I'll send we, that email how, out. this has been, I mean, this has been, Dave, you were on the board the last time we yeah. tried to get this going. So, yeah. I mean, this is. And do so, they have a connection? Okay, from. Everson? No, they have to do a study first. So they're, I think they, from what Ben said, they're starting to work on that study. Okay. So there's, 20, this is part of the contract. Years. This is part of the contract is figure out if there's fatal flaws, what happens, you know. Yeah. How does this impact the town? That sort of thing, because there's an expectation of funding here that's yeah. gone that you've had for four years. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, I would like a little bit of cash for our town. We could use it this next operating year. Okay. Yeah, we're need it. Um, the next item on the agenda is the solid waste management contract for um, hazardous waste day. So I our, have just a question on that. Sure. Um, so it looks like. Our fee is about four thousand dollars. Yeah, that's our uh, budget. Is that just for, like, is that a budget for how much that we may, our residents may? What what does that pay for? Like, just to be involved in this? It's like, a fee. It, it's so that budget line item covers the ex expected amount that we would be paying um, towards. Don't, don't uh, residents pay when they go get rid of their stuff? Yes, but and we have we to guarantee. Well, this is a guarantee. Say, uh, what's that? This is this is sort of like the upfront guarantee. Uh, what we this is what we would estimate that we have to haul away, and and there is a charge for people to drop stuff off, and so it it's it ends up. Um, so do they pay down that four grand? Is that the idea? Or do yes, we pay four grand and they pay on top of yeah, it? Yeah, it's a front, it, we front the money. And then they pay it down. Yeah. Um, and then 
Because you have to pay, you have to pay someone to haul this stuff away. So I, yeah, I get they, that they, for they're sure. contracting with haulers to haul yeah. it someplace. And this you, is our anticipated. The town pays a certain amount towards that hauling. Do yeah. We, um, do we know what the average is? I mean, do we make our money? Is it worth doing every year? I mean, because oh, yes. many people drop yes. off something and we still paid four grand. It just seems like a waste of money, but. No, no we do. usually go, there's actually a pretty big um, impact. People utilize this because really they make it open. Then. They, I mean, well, they do actually. Yep. I have the advertise, like I have the pamphlets, mm -hmm. but we usually put a link up on the website and they have right. to pre-register. So yeah. what happens is, is it helps us figure out how many participants we're going to have from Deerfield yeah. so that we can correlate that with the money. Yeah, I That's, just make sure that's that one of the reasons we do that pre-reg. Um, so we pay the most out of any town. So I just want to make sure that we're utilizing it the most. Well, you, Green, well, no, Montague pays more than us. And, um, oh, yeah. and Greenfield's not on here because they have- No, their Greenfield own. does their own. They right. does their own. So, I mean, it, if you if you look through the list, the only one that is a little bit odd, I think, is Northfield. Northfield seems to pay pay more than we do, you know, right. proportionately is and much Apple higher. Is like only two grand compared to, you know, Deerfield. It's full. It's double that. It just yeah, seems kind of weird how that lays out. But yeah, I mean, I'm not. I mean, yeah, I'm just asking. The question. Yeah. That's all. Well, it's the number of participants. Um, yeah. I, no, I'm. If people are people using use it, it. we're getting rid of that stuff. It needs to happen, so that's fine. Well, it's not, and it doesn't end up on the side of the road. Right. And when it does, so. Yeah, and and so I have to say, it really works. But okay. Casey, just make sure the stuff gets up on the uh, our web page and yep. the new Facebook page and stuff. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I'll take a motion, motion to approve this. Yep. I make a motion to approve this the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District and the Town of Deerfield for the Hazardous Collection Day, I'll which is that. September si uh, 26, 2020. And just to clarify with everybody, there's there are two sites. Um, it's not like you bring it to our transfer station. No. You have to, I guess, pre-register again. And the collection sites are at Greenfield Community College and the Orange Transfer Station. Yes, it rotates around. Um, uh, it, once in a while it comes to our, I mean, every few years, but um, it's GCC is the closest one for us right now, yep. this, this okay. year. Yep. Um, so we have no a motion, this, is there a second? Dave did. I Dave seconded. Said, okay, good, thank you. Um, no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfham. Aye, Carolyn Ness, okay. Um, Okay. Uh, next, uh, there's no sewer abatement. I couldn't find. No. Nope. No. And nope. Okay. Looks like, well, we have one Bob Armstrong's on. on. Welcome, Bob. Okay. Hi, Bob. So he would be the one from, you're from Conway, right, Bob? Yes. Um, okay, so if let's I go unmute, ahead. then I can say yes. So, yes, yes, you can. I, I, I'm expecting a couple other people maybe from Conway. I'm not sure. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. We can wait. Um, so, uh, Casey, the only other um, item I just wanted us, um, John had a, a John Pachorik had a, um, a successful visit on the park site, um, mm -hmm. uh, or the park person from- Alyssa Cryan. Yeah, Alyssa, thank you. I couldn't remember her name. Um, yeah. She, she came and did a walkthrough. Trevor, thank you for being there. Um, it was successful, so we're gonna put in an application and um, we, I, I'm going to contact uh, Kate, Climate Kate. I can never remember her last, or uh, can't Thea pronounce Hardy. her last name. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. <laughs> anyway, I'll call her with some, uh, you know, try to get some advice. Um, Casey, we need to work with John on that and yep. we'll yep, get our yep. story. He's already developed a bunch of stuff. A, yep. a lot of Melissa's requests he's developed. There's okay. a couple of things that we will probably have to deal with at a, at a fall town meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we'll, we'll work on that this week. Trevor, is there anything you wanted to add on that? Uh, no, I just, um, I think, you know, we, we will need to start setting. I think once we get to a point where we know what we can do and we have some assessments done, we want to start to have some public input on what we, you know, what we want there, what we want it to look like. Um, you know, I know we're, 
you know, we have an idea of what we would like, but we do need public input on what, what should be there, how it looks, you know, how the public will use it. Um, yep. We definitely need public participation for that. Okay. Welcome, Erica. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. Welcome. Thank you for having us. Sure. Okay. Um, so, oh, and congratulations, Erica. It's nice yeah. to meet you. Great. Very happy um, to meet you. So, uh, are we waiting for Phil or did yeah. you, it was just, okay. Yeah, Phil, Phil was, he's the one who contacted us. So yeah, we'll have to wait for him. All right, we'll um, wait. Is there anything else besides the marijuana stuff and the um, Conway uh, discussion? We've got some CBA stuff to look at. Oh, and have yes, okay. On. Let's um, Plus for comments. So there's the, I was corrected by Jennifer that we need to refer to these by their um, addresses. So I apologize for yeah. that. And okay. I misspelled something. So the first one is one steam mill road. Okay. And then I found out we should have just done like a, an all encompassing item item on the agenda like we do with sewer abatements. So, um, but we don't have a lot of time to get these comments back to the ZBA. So yeah. you have 77 Stillwater Road and 8 Sherman Drive. So Okay. I and then the other one, Casey. That one was one steam mill. And then there's the two other ones. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. 77 Stillwater, 8 Sherman Drive, and the other one was one steam mill, and that was the Colo. Yep. Thank you. And Colo. So um, I just, I don't know. Do, uh, do we want to talk about those now or after? Well, well you, uh, Phil's, Phil's on, Phil. so Phil you could. Here. Oh, Phil's on? Okay. Yeah, Phil's well, on. My stuff. Yeah. Um, good evening. Good evening. Hi, Phil, and uh, I, I, this, this is wonderful that you're calling in and participating with us. I am honored. Yeah, we're very happy to have you all here. For Thank you. I'm Bless actually you. really excited because I brought this up uh, about a year ago when I heard, I think it was either West Springfield or Westfield, I can't remember. I was at um, a meeting, uh, a state meeting, and um, they were they're pulling in all kinds of cash. And it was two like, million, how, how fantastic. $2 million. Yeah, I cannot believe it. And it was like, it's a win-win. You're pulling in cash and you're doing something great for climate change. So let's hear your proposal and let's figure out how we can uh, support you. Well, um, it's, it's, it's not even a proposal quite yet, but it's fixing to shape up that way. So um, I, I, I submitted a grant, an MTWP uh, grant proposal for $20,000 for a feasibility study um, and uh, to, to do, for, for, to participate in the climate credit market. Um, and it's the same exact feasibility study that was done by the Westfield, Longmeadow, West Springfield uh, conglomerate. And it's actually a project that is headed by Williamstown uh, and and uh, Hank Art, the founder of Mohawk, uh, is also participating in it from, from that end. Uh, and, and so that's, the, there is an actual market. If we can get our forests to the market, as they say, then um, there's, there, it's, it's, it's really worth doing. So, and the reason that I am interested in collaboration with Deerfield is because Deerfield is the owner of 980 acres of forested land within the town of Conway. Um, uh, which It's a water district though, it's not the town. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is, it is. And so, you know, so, so, but, but it's, it's a big enough concept and it's, that, that it really requires an introduction to the select board too. And, uh, mm -hmm. and to yep. let, um, but, but basically you at the, the water district actually has hired the same forest management group that we are using to develop the plans that are going to be used by the feasibility study. So we're really in a position to um, coordinate in that regard as well. And that forester, uh, that Mary Wigmore, I don't know if you know her, um, but she, she's very supportive of the whole idea and the idea of two towns collaborating for that purpose. So um, we, absolutely. Um, Carolyn, could we ha uh, do and, a letter of support and, and um, request you know, uh, from to to the Deerfield Waste uh, Deerfield Water District, that we encourage them to you know work with Conway and 
you know, and, absolutely, and I, you know, absolutely. We do, have um, acreage, we do have acreage too. It's not 900 acres, but I mean, the D town of Deerfield would be happy. I think Carolyn was talking before about trying to find ways to well, move that, our other. I mean, yeah, we didn't have enough. We only have like 150 acres or something, but we have 150 acres or whatever. And then um, uh, because of uh, the utility, you know, fine. The, the water district, the old Deerfield water district is going to get um, rights or property rights to um, their watershed area by still up by Stillwater Bridge. And, but they don't wanna take the conservation restriction. Um, they don't feel comfortable with it. So the Deerfield, I mean, the Franklin Land Trust is, is a facilitator of this and they wanna give um, the town of Deerfield the conservation restriction on that. So. Um, we could throw in those acres because um, yeah, we control those acres. And I, and I, I, Casey, do you remember how, how much that was? I can't remember off the top of my head. The it's acreage? like, a, yeah, wasn't it like a hundred acres or something? It's something like that. I'd have to go yes. back and look. So anyway, I yeah. think totally the town of Deerfield, maybe we could come up with a couple hundred acres or more. And, um, and if we, could work with the water district. You said that's like 980 acres. So we, we could partner maybe a little over a thousand acres for sure. Yeah, and, that'd, be, um, that'd be great. The, the, they're looking for uh, 15 uh, chunks of 1500 acres. And for, for, William, for instance, for Williamstown to get there, they're using forested lands from a township in Vermont that borders them and from a ta uh, town in New York state that borders them. Oh, how cool is that? They and they took uh, they took the um they took acreage from out of state. As long as wow. it's a forest management plan. Um, yes. No, but, that's good. Well, and, and, um, the other thing I was thinking when I was thinking of this, um, because we we as a town don't have control over very many uh, forest acres, I was thinking we could put together we could send out uh, letters to because um, you know under sixty one B you have the four forestry acres here, our assessors know who is under 61B. And we could send it out to all the 61B people and maybe they would want to join in um, and, 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 as private landowners. And participate as well. Um, and they're, they're, they're looking for, if, um, the feedback that I got is they want someone with at least 100 acres to put in. Um, right. And uh, we would have that information with our successors and right. assessors. And then, then if, if you did the same thing, you know, that would again, add up more. And my understanding is that uh, the more you have, like you said, the 1500 acres minimum, but um, the more acres you had, the more desirability for it. And if everybody was putting into it. Um, the other thing is uh, just to follow up on that, uh, this was a state commission meeting and it, they were talking about all different programs, but um, we put in for our MVP program, um, this uh, MVP five, our fifth round here, um, was a soil a healthy soils analysis um, assessment. And I'm hoping um, a pilot with that has the state, a, a, a company up in Greenfield, it has the state contract for that. So um, I met him at some meetings and we, you know, it, they worked with us on, um, our climate day way before COVID, which seems like eons ago. But anyway, there was a lot of momentum to that. So the healthy soils, what there's, uh, the soils hold of a lot of carbon as well. And NRCS, Natural Resource and Conservation Service, which I'm chair of the conservation district here, and I'm also president of the Mass Association, um, we, we have lots of money for no-till and, and reduced till. And if we do acres in that program, that, that, that they pay a ton more money than the forest. And so again, if we, if we could do this on a countywide basis, we could come up with a, you know, acres that um, private, we could get people privately together. Not, this wouldn't be town because obviously we don't have you know, farming, but this would be another way for f our farmers to um, get a little bit of cash and uh, participate in a really an impactful climate change practice. And right. so hoping to do that assessment here in Deerfield 
and and work with our local farmers and and we could, if we could do that countywide we could do the same um you know program that carbon sequestration i can never say it but yeah. anyway they pay for that as well and 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 it is tens of thousands of dollars on the market and i mean i don't know how they how that really works but I, you know, Westfield Group, I heard about them. And like you said, it's around $2 million. It's pretty, pretty impactful. It's a little nice paycheck for our towns when they're having a hard time right now. And, and for our farmers, it would be a great opportunity, I think. And, yeah. And the, 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 there's also rumors, there's long, there, I mean, I've been hearing rumors for years that the state is going to establish its own carbon credit market. Um, you know, uh, but, that's but what they not... were starting to talk about, but um, this was before COVID hit, Yeah. and um, this was back in January, and um, in the end of last year, it was a, the November, our November meeting, and then our January meeting, and we were following up on it, and then COVID hit, and I have to tell you, there's been no action since then. You know, the so focus this, of state. This is, this is Dave Wolfram. Um, seeing that you're going to be contacting the South Deerfield Water District about their property in Conway. They have actually more property in Waitley. They have over 2,000 right. acres total. Oh, so oh. maybe Waitley would want to group in. So yeah. that would yeah. get you your 1,500 all by itself. Wow. That, watershed in Waitley is a lot bigger than the watershed in Conway. Right. He's right. I hadn't thought as much yeah. time as I spend in that too. And, right. Um, so we'll definitely write a letter of support because um, I already thought of that as when I heard about it last year, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a good way. This will help our farmers. This will help our forest owners. This will help the town. You know, we'll get some cash and um, this reduce our tax rate. My, be fantastic. And, my, and my understanding is that the feasibility study, which I've been told has been preliminarily highly thought of, um, that uh, in terms of being actually awarded the grant money, that it will that, that that's supposed to pay for the roadmap that sets forth what ex, you know exactly line by line what we need to do to participate okay. in, in in what is a regional actual marketplace mm. um, and get, get certified and what, there's a whole that you know, I, I did send that 59 page study to Trevor. Yes. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's deep, yeah. it's kind of thick reading, but it sort of lays out the whole process uh, that that a town goes through to participate in that market. And at the end of it is, like they said, two million dollars for those three towns that each put up fifteen hundred acres or so. So yeah, yeah. Carolyn, would would those no-till grants also work for forests, or is that just for cleared land? No, that's no-till is. Um, the, the soils, the healthy soils initiative is a whole separate thing from the um, farm. I mean, the forest stuff, but the forest stuff and it, they were paying for that um, was in that market originally that I was interested in, but the healthy soils was another, they were starting to anticipate um, because the studies show that the, the soil um, actually holds holds more carbon. So well, they were all put, of our forests would qualify for no till. You know, yeah, I, mean, that I, would oh, be, I know. But that I, would the, be easy. the no till, what you're trying to do is convert um, farmers to no till. To no till. That, that would be a tougher, yeah. tougher well, except, uh, job to convince. Well, except NRCS has all the, they will pay for the equipment, they pay for everything, and they have the transition program. And then once you've transitioned, your production actually goes up. It shows that you go up on certain, I mean, they have all kinds of statistics and stuff. So the idea is, you know, what started the conversation out here was, you know, all like in Hatfield, around Hatfield, you know, all the potato fields. But the problem is you can't grow potatoes in a no-till. I mean, they're just, it doesn't work. So, right. you know, what, ab what about some of the latest studies they've showed about hemp, how it consumes more carbon than just about any other vegetation? Well, plant. that's, yeah, that's one of the reasons that hemp now has been um, legalized is because of the carbon, um, the carbon uh, help that it does. 
you know, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there now. And there's all kinds of different ways to uh, collect money on the federal programs um, under the farm, this new farm bill that was approved um, in December of, uh, you know, of 18, it should have, but it's, the programs were still being promulgated. And it's just now, even though we're two years into it, it's just now settling down. And it, and it's because there was so much disruption at the Department of Agriculture. So hopefully we'll get three more years out of it. And then the new farm bill, which they'll start working on in two years, is um, um, will follow up on more of this soil health stuff. And we'll have more um, idea of, of, you know, the forest programs and, and the soil health in another year or so. Well, what I love about this is just the, the regional collaboration. I love, you know, I think when you called Phil, I was just very excited to work with Conway, you know, more, more and more as, you know, whatever we can do together regionally, you know, we work with Waitley and Sunderland and, um, and, you know, we, we share a school and we do so much together. We see every, each other at every meeting. And um, I just think the more we can do the better, you know, together, the better off we are for sure. Well, and all of us, I mean, let's face it, this next year is going to be potentially really tough. So any new um, money, any revenue that we can think of that's positive, I mean, and this is climate change. We've been trying to figure out, I mean, we've been all so derailed by COVID that nobody is really talking about climate change anymore. And I, I mean, yes, sea, sea level rising and, you know, the polar bears, I mean, all that stuff is serious, but honestly, this has more impact. And um, and it and it also will benefit us. Mm -hmm. And so I'm um, I'm really glad that we're trying to fo focus on that. It's an actual paradigm shift happening right before our eyes. And and to to me, this is an issue that I know in our time, Conway at least, it is a, a unifying and healing kind of a solution to the yes. issue of forest and town woodlands. Because yeah. one, you know, it th there's always a, a, a segment of the population that just wants taxes lowered and if that means cutting down the trees that the town owns if they can get lower taxes for that you know there, there's people that that put in, and I, I'm, I'm exaggerating that but there's people that that want as part of forest management to have commercial cutting mm -hmm. and and w we in Conway have tried this over the years and it's never worked out it always ends up it always starts with promises of income but by the time you have to actually pay to get the logs out and build the landings and do the culverts and this and that, the, the money that the town actually received, the last time we did it, the town received about $40,000, which was about one third of what they were expecting. And that was 10 years ago. And there's still scars in the woods that people resent to this day. Yeah. And, um, and, and when you can show that the same thing, just leaving the woods alone, that can, can reduce the tax burden more, that's just, wow. Run. Well, no, it's a win-win. Yeah, You're doing yeah. a lot. And that's why this whole healthy soils thing, I mean, it's more social justice because uh, issue because it's food security as well. I mean, mm -hmm. you're helping our farmers, you're doing carbon, you know, you know, it is doing more carbon collection, but it also is, is, is food security issue. And we're producing, you know, we're protecting our food production. And so, um, it is a win-win if we're going to get paid for it and reduce our tax rate. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I was really excited about it. I told Trevor and Dave about it. And then, and then I mean, we just, we got derailed by COVID and yeah. no, nobody's followed up on it. And, you know, we didn't even have a, a meeting in July. You know, normally we would have quarterly meetings. So we just didn't even have a meeting in July. So um, we'd be really excited about this. So yeah. we'll get the letter out. Great. Um, and we'll, so, you know, Waitley and maybe well. we can rope in um, Waitley um, with um, what the water district owns in Waitley. Thank you for bringing that up, Dave. Yeah. Um, yeah, the only concern I have with the water district is a long range plan for the water district was to take all leaf bearing trees out of their watershed hmm. because it contaminates the water because now the state won't let them clean the reservoirs. So basically the reservoir that's in Waitley, in uh, Conway right now, the big one, mm -hmm. is dead because they can't clean it because there's so much vegetation in it. Huh. Fish, fish can't even live in there. It's too much. It's just so that's no why option. they want to get rid of that and they want to replace it with pines and stuff, which <laughs> yeah. have obviously a different carbon footprint than the 
Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have to. So let's talk. About, I mean, we just need to explore this for sure. Yeah. And see what, yeah. what the long range plan is. What what we need to do. How we can, how we can do that. And um, you know, see if Sunderland and Waitley want to want to tie into some of that. Yeah, and uh, you know, the, I, the, I'm not sure where that how much commonality in the forest management plans has to exist for it to still qualify. Right. Um, we'll, yeah. we'll but, learn. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you're not going to see that land cleared for the next 20, 30 years, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. And it is it is just a 20 year commitment. I do know that it's a 22 yeah. year forest well, management but, commitment. It, so the plan so, was to start getting rid of those trees probably 40 years ago, and they're still not happening. <laughs> So uh, one well, other area of um, commonality that we are dealing with too is the river access yeah. and what kind of um, you know negative issues we've been dealing with with um, river access, especially this winter. The summer's been so hot; we're getting people all over. You know, we've talked about different businesses dropping people off, and we've w our last select board meeting we've had residents you know speaking had a hearing on, on them speaking of you know how unsafe they feel in their home because of you know the traffic and and the people that are there and what what's going on and what you know not that there's people there it's just the actions that people are taking on their property and you know around their children and you know coming up into their property into their driveways um and and so river access i know you've been dealing with this as well so do you want to tell us about what's going on in well I, I know this this was this was um the whole idea of a joint meeting actually i think bob armstrong first brought it up and this was the topic that he was yeah. really um and and um so bob do you want do you want to answer that question well well my concern particularly with deerfield was that you guys are restricting still water parking and trying to you, you know stop the the you know, especially the huge number of, I'll say, out-of-town people, but yes. then, then it involves everybody to keep them from parking at Stillwater. And, and I'm sure all of those people are parking up in Conway at our Barnesville Ferry Bridge and starting from there. And, and we have a rafting company that starts at Barnesville Ferry and comes down to Station Road, which is just upstream from Stillwater. Mm -hmm. and so, and, but my fear for all of this was that, that Azur up in Charlemont starts to crack down. They've changed their parking regulations. And if people can't do their rafting up at the Zor Gap, they're going to start looking to Conway and Deerfield. And then mm -hmm. you guys are going to, you know, I think you guys have restricted still water, right? We, ha we have some, well, there's, there's parking years ago that slowed down, I think because of bank erosion there um, that we stopped. We blocked it off. Yeah, blocked right. off half of it. The other half you can still park on, which is not as steep when, uh, it's a little more secure area there. We did block off a couple of access roads because we had, you know, cars pulling in and then flipping on the roof and dumping, you know, dumping out, you know, literally got to tow the truck out of the place. It just wasn't, it's not safe for cars to go in or they would block it. And that's the emergency access for, you know, the Swift River um, dive teams. Um, and then you've got that area under the 91 bridges that were just redone after Irene. Um, so that's kind of where everyone's parking, but then they're, they're overflowing all the way up and parking on everyone else's lawn and up in their yeah. driveways. And they're, you know, they're just, by the time they get down there, they're inebriated and they're just really obnoxious to the neighbors. We have people parking on private property and, uh, and, you know, a lot of Conway residents are upset that people are parking on their property, shinnying down into uh, the South river. This is, way yep. upstream of where the South River flows into the Deerfield. Yep. And that's where that little boy got his leg cut or caught uh, a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. nearly drowned. Uh, you I know, did and not hear about that. It was wow. very, very bad. And, and it was very similar to what happened to the Mohawk principal's son back, was that 25 years ago? And yeah, that and, was at the Zor Gap though, right? And that was up at Zor Gap. Yes, it was. Yeah. But, yep. but it's the same kind of thing where his foot got stuck between two rocks and, and, he, and he got held under for a long time wow. and was rescued, but, you know, is seriously impacted. Damn. This kid, he had enough people around him to hold his head above water for about an hour and a half. It took wow. to, to actually get his foot free. And, and the, the, uh, the medics actually had to give him a shot to make him unconscious because to drag his foot out from between the rocks was so painful that right. they they wow. wow they I didn't hear about that so it, so it, it, this was 
a near disaster. Yeah. And, uh, and, and this was just on somebody's private property. People are parking, shinning yeah. down into our river and floating down, not even with tubes. They're just, you know, like, like on their rear ends, flowing yeah. down these wonderful little uh, waterfalls. Um, yeah. And if and Charlemont is looking now, they have changed their parking regulations to what they call only live parking. If you can park there, but it's only if you're going to have a little picnic next to your car. And yep. if the police come by and they say, whose car is this? They expect somebody to say, that's my car. And if not, they tow it. And, and so that is going to really change the way people are going to be able to tube on, uh, on, on the river starting up at the Zor Gap. And all those people are going to be looking to tube somewhere. They're going to be yeah. looking at us. And we've been, Carolyn's been really, you know, pressuring the state. We've been talking about um, getting parking down by the Cheapside Bridge where the state owns. Uh, they own that. They own a parcel of land right kind of past the walk. In there. Conway, people are parking at our Station Road State Forest. We have a yes. state forest at the end of Station Road. We can't regulate the parking there. Right, right. So we need to kind of, we need to think, you know, on a broader scale regionally with the state on how we're, how we're going to deal with this access to this river. And I don't see it slowing up, but it's got to be managed in a way that's not, you know, um, unsafe for our residents, unsafe for the people coming to do it. Um, you know, and then not to mention the mountains of trash and beer cans and all the other stuff that gets bought, the styrofoam coolers that would come up and grab that stuff and then just leave it uh, wherever they are. Um, it's just a mess. I mean, it's a mess. We've, we've asked the rafting company in Conway to police the areas that they use, and they've done a very good job. Our, our, our uh, dump is not happy. They're not doing as good a job as we would like sorting properly. But, but, you know, that's, but they are cleaning up the area, so that's really fantastic. Uh, that's okay. not happening so much down at Station Road. Yeah, because that's state property, and we really somebody ought to be putting a, a porta potty down there. Yeah. What um, what the conservation district, the Franklin Conservation District, um, which I said I had chaired, um, we got a small grant for a forty-two thousand dollar grant to um, do a river access issues study, and which you participated in, uh, Bob. I mean, we we were going to have. Uh, at that time, Carolyn, everything that I could talk about was the parking problems we had at Barnesville Ferry Bridge last year. This was all before this boy nearly died. And so, so that was, you know, anyway, go ahead. I'm no, no, no. It just, um, so anyway, we, we, we were able to proceed even though we had COVID. We did it on Zoom and it wasn't nearly, obviously, nearly as good. But the whole point was that we solicited uh, communities up and down the Deerfield, up and down Green River, because Green River has some real issues. Um, we collaborated with Wyndham County Conservation District. That's one of the reasons we went through the Conservation District, because there are issues over the line in Vermont, obviously, on the rivers. So um, what we came up with is we're just finishing up the study now, and we're submitting it to the state, um, and we're hoping this will propel for a, a 10 to $15 million ask on the next environmental bill, which is coming up in the next year, you know, about 18 months. And um, what it is doing is documenting all the issues that we have in all our communities, uh, policing, trash, all that kind of stuff. And the reason why there's so much money involved is because you do need porta potties, you do need environmental police officers, and you do need um, some kind of, uh, I don't want to say armoring because we do not do armoring anymore on the rivers. We do restoration, but these are all natural river banks and the amount of traffic, foot traffic that's happening, as you, you know, you were talking about all these banks are ro eroding and caving in. And what we have to do is do some kind of enforcement, reinforcement of natural bio, whatever solutions to make sure the banks um, are more protected and can withstand, you know, the, up and down of the hydro companies because you know that's constant erosion that in a, in a week it's it's similar to like 20 years of um uh you know erosion you know your average because you're having the up and Baby down rush. up and down releases so yeah. it takes care of what's happening at the hydro um, plants as well as you know the foot traffic and so the idea is to you know work up and down the rivers and all these areas that are 
um, been negatively impacted and fix them, but also pr provide for personnel to police them. So it relieves us, you know, our communities of the policing cost. And, and then we have trash pickup and as well as the porta potties, you know, kind of thing. So, I mean, it's not earth shattering, but, and, and it's developed that they were always going to develop by the cheap side bridge, um, a handicap access, um, um, you know, place to get to the river. And so that's where it should be kind of thing. So anyway, I, I know something really has to, there, there's been recent weekends when I've driven over the Bar Rails Ferry Bridge and, um, um, you know, and you look at, you look down towards Deerfield and it looks like a Coney B, Coney Island beach scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just the color and the, the crowd on that river. And I, 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 I don't ever remember it like that before. I, uh, going by, this year was really, really, I mean, I l I've lived there for 40 years and, you know, coming down by Stillwater this summer, I've never seen it. This was absolutely the worst I've ever seen. There's just cars on both sides of the road. It was so invasive to the homeowners along there. And, um, you know, and it just what was happening to the riverbanks was just amazing. And I, I, it was so, uh, it was devastating really to the riverbanks. And you need our input for the conservation district report that you're doing? Yeah. I, that, I, you know, I don't know how you collected data. I mean, and there wasn't that much data that came out of that Zoom meeting. Well, except, you know, I've been, I mean, we have, we have stuff from us that we've been collecting for years. So, but anything that you could write to us would be very helpful because, um, and then we'll, we'll be asking for, like I said, we're going to put an ask in the, uh, for the 10 or $15 million in the next environmental bill. So, we definitely would love a letter of support um, at that time, you know, in, you know, next year sometime. Yeah, great. I, I would support the cheap side project that you were that, that you had mentioned, just because any the any air let out of the system. Right. <laughs> the system. Well, yeah. see, that's what's happening. Every time they shut you shut down a spot, it just moves to another spot. And, right. And and that's not a way to handle it either. I mean, if you look at it, just like armoring the banks of the river, where you armor one section, you're just pushing the velocity down to another section. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's exactly what's happening with the people as well. And so that's why you have to, you have to rethink what you're doing and you have to, you know, put, we have to put some money towards it, but um, none of us. Carolyn, we, we have a 730 public hearing right oh, now about okay. our forestry, um, our forestry plan. Well, we'll get, we'll write the letters, you guys. That would, and if would you be great. Send a, and if you want to send a letter into the Franklin Conservation District, you can just send it here and um, we'll, we'll uh, write a letter as well and get it yeah. to um, get saying that we had additional meetings or something. So. Right. So Eric that and Phil are free to keep talking. That would be wonderful. But I promised I would be over at the public no. hearing. So no, no that's all right. Yeah. We want to go home tonight. Too, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure you do. You have a busy <laughs> day. Yeah. So yeah. I'd yeah. love to do this more often. I can't Great. Uh, thank you enough, Erica and, and Phil and Bob for joining us and um, look forward to working with you a bunch in the future. So thank you. Yeah, no, it's yeah. really great. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good Bye. evening. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. That was really nice. Uh, yeah, that was really nice. Well, um, why don't we um, um, uh, why don't we get together on the marijuana stuff right now? Yeah. And, okay. Um, then we can. Then we, that's it. Because I think well, that's let me, the last. Let me. I, I'll talk for a minute before I come out and just. And okay. I'll, uh, so I'll come out to the map in a second, but just to get everybody up to speed. So, um, and just for I guess for the public to give some background. So, uh, 2018 we had. Um, you know, or years before my time on the board, the, the town had, uh, had approved medical marijuana in, in the town. And we were one of the first, I think, towns in the state. We were the, one of the first, yes. Yeah, one of the first, to, uh, and we're yet to have anything. Um, so uh, aside from that, 2018, we had, did, we, have, we had done a large change to our zoning and to allow recreational marijuana to be sold and cultivated in town. Um, and at that time, the zoning was for the RA district, we thought a lot of farmers would get involved with this. Um, and so we included the RA district and then we had two small overlay districts. One was the industrial park 
which is pretty much filled up. And then there was a small section kind of from um, across from Yankee Candle and, and coming up a little bit from the Waitley line, the Sugarloaf shops up a little bit um, allowed for some retail um, and cultivation. So now that we've had that opportunity in town for the last couple of years, um, and, and we've had two entities kind of start the process and get licensed by the CCC, the Cannabis Control Commission. Um, they're, they're moving ahead with plans to get cultivation going, um, recreational marijuana sales. Um, and right now we don't offer any manufacturing. Um, and the only cultivation area that we have kind of under construction right now that I know of is the um, the, I don't think the other one's actually under construction yet um, by the Sugarloaf shops, but the, um, the other one has been under construction up uh, along Mill Village Road by Melnick Farm. Um, and that construction work is happening right now. We, we've had hearing, hearings for propane tanks and all, all kinds of stuff. And so they're moving ahead with that, but there is no manufacturing at that facility. And um, we think that it's an economic benefit to the town because it, there's not, a, there's, to, to do manufacturing of uh, marijuana, you know, you, you cultivate it, you grow it, you process it, and then you would take it and manufacture, like distill the, the oils out of it, or you'd have a commercial kitchen, you would do some, um, some making of material, gummies or whatever, whatever they would make uh, to then sell in a store or sell to a wholesaler or something like that. So um, Personally, it's not, I feel like, Trevor, I just want to interrupt you. It's yeah. not really manufacturing like you would think of manufacturing. It's Correct. just processing. It's processing. Right. It's, it's more of processing. It's not like a, you know, it's not a steel stamping factory or something. That kind of, it's not mass uh, manufacturing per se. It's kind of processing the, the material into something they can sell. And we don't think the impact is very great. So um, right now uh, we would, you know, so so there was, there, so this was, uh, there was a couple of issues with that, you know, um, with the initial zoning bylaw that was approved two years ago that we wanted to fix. Um, some of the language talked about a retail facility couldn't be within 2000 feet of another facility. And if one went in in Waitley, was that going to limit, you know, our only spot in Deerfield to have one? So we wanted to correct that language that it just said within Deerfield, there would be a 2000 foot limit between retail facilities. Um, so we, we wanted to fix that. I, I do think it's important to allow uh, manufacturing of the material or processing of the material at, at, an existing, um, at an existing facility. And then there was the, um, so, so along with that, those kind of fixes that we wanted to get going, the planning board had also on their own been working on a separate ma uh, marijuana bylaw that um, was going to severely limit what was going on as far as um, any cultivation in the RA district. So, um, and then there were some other changes that they were working on. They had a public hearing on, and um, th so there were two kind of avenues moving towards town meeting this spring. And we felt, I felt, um, you know, just based on COVID, we didn't want to have a big drawn out discussion at town meeting because we were trying to get things through quickly and just deal with finances. Um, but we wanted, and, and also wanted to see if I, we could, this board and the planning board, um, negotiate together one, um, you know, see if we could compromise and come up with one bylaw to take to the town instead of two competing bylaws that would really confuse people. I just think we could do more work on our end to try and find common ground and put one bylaw forward. So I, I had approached the planning board for that. Um, I told, you know, we had told the planning board that we would not put either bylaw on uh, Springtown meeting that we would hold off and maybe uh, work together. And then so um, Chris um, Curtis has been hired by the um, planning board to kind of craft a new bylaw. That's the one that's kind of rolling through the planning board right now. And then um, I had asked if Chris Curtis, um, a member of the planning board and Mary, and, uh, and, and a member of the select board, me, could get together and, and see if we could co find common ground on this. So we met, um, I think it was Monday night, uh, we met to look over proposed zoning maps and just talk about you know, each, each, each board's wants and desires and could we find common ground. I think we had a really good meeting and we're moving that process along. 
um, looking at new areas that we would open up that would allow more space for retail, more space for um, cultivation and processing, manufacturing. Um, so the next step was to bring this to the select board and talk about those areas in town and then think about others. Do we wanna really shut off the whole RA district? Are there some parts of the RA district that we think might be um, acceptable? Now, I think over the last few years, we've realized that manufacturing or, or cultivation of marijuana is done more in conjunction with a building enclosed with security 24 hours, 365 days a year. It's not really a farming product that farmers are putting out in their field. They're putting hemp out in their field and that's good for, for them. It gives them a product to sell, but there really isn't, the farmers really aren't the ones going, I'm going to grow this outdoors because you need the security. You're, you're, you're worried about your crop with the weather and all kinds of, you know, other issues that it really is more, of, more um, suited for areas that are existing buildings, um, you know, more in a, more industrial commercial area versus the whole RA district. Um, so I understand the wants and the needs of the planning board to kind of limit that a bit. I just don't know if it's the whole RA district that needs to be off the map. And um, I'm, I'm trying to look at the zoning and I'm going to come out and show you the map a little bit. Uh, but I still have a little bit more information I'm trying to gather to make sure that we do not want to look at anything in the RA district, or there might be a couple of sections in the RA district. There is, there is an existing, as I said, an existing um, cultivation area um, that's under construction now that is in the RA district. Um, and, and based on the low impact of processing and manufacturing and the benefit to the taxpayer and to the town when we need money, uh, especially in this climate, and I can only see it getting worse. Um, I think it makes sense to allow that facility to have manufacturing, but we need to do it in a way that isn't, you know, it isn't spot zoning where we're just allowing this one area. So I really want to look at the RA district where that is. Are there any areas that we would include in a specific um, zone in that area and maybe limit the others and leave our good soils for farming and not for putting a big building or a big greenhouse up. So the idea is to find that happy balance between economic development, jobs in our community, revenue into the town, and then also protecting the good lands of our, you know, of our community and, and the characteristics of a rural community. So you didn't have just these, these metal buildings all over the RA district that were growing marijuana. So um, and and it's, so, it's up to a select board to kind of decide, do we want to host agreement with this and what does it look like? So, and we're all very cautious about that, but we think it's important to clean up the zoning. The, the, the other thing that has changed is that with the CCC involved now, it is, um, it's no longer medical marijuana and um, recreational adult use marijuana. It has changed to be all encompassing under one. It used to be the um, Department of Public Health would run the medical part and CCC would run the recreational, now CCC runs all of it. So we do need to clean up our language and our bylaws so that it is um, more consistent with what's going on now. So uh, that's pretty long winded, but there's, that's just kind of where we're at right now. So the idea tonight was to come to you with, based on our meeting, talk about the maps a little bit, which I'll come out and do, and then regroup again um, with some other information with the planning board. And then eventually if we could get some information together, we would have a public hearing on one of these things that maybe we could bring to fall town meeting. I'm hoping this meeting winds up in October, not September, but there are other aspects of town, you know, town that are pulling at us. So we don't have a ton of time, but I think we, we could get something together if the planning board would be willing to meet twice in one month in September to kind of do a, do a meeting with us again, and then to have a public hearing on it. So um, I'll come out I'll uh, put my mask on and I'll come out and just show you the zones that we were looking at. And they may be able to pick that up on the camera too. So I'll be out in a sec. So um, this is the map here. I don't know if you want to come over. Or if you want to... No, I, yeah, no, I looked at it. I'm you all set. Yeah. Okay, so for the public, this is a map of um, zoning. I'm not sure if John can put that up on our camera, but um, 
Trevor, Trevor, I think the camera's right there. Yeah. There are two, there's one map here. This is our industrial park, which is Maryland. our overlay district. Turn your, can, turn your laptop around so he can see. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Okay. Um, and adjust the, can, adjust the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll do the best we can. Uh, so there's one spot here, which is our um, industrial park. Uh, and then there's another small spot here, which is um, kind of the old Deerfield plastic area and the lot next to it, where Deerfield Natural is planning to put a retail store and a cultivation, I believe. That was the intent of our proposed agreement. And then, um, so that doesn't leave a lot. You know, this is already all developed. This is pretty much owned by one entity. Um, there's no nowhere else to do anything in town. Um, Eric, can you bring that closer to the camera so people that are online can see it? What does she want? Well, she wants you to bring that one just a little bit closer, closer to, the to the camera. camera? Yeah, because it's small. Is that a little bit better? No, come closer to the Carolyn's camera because people who are online won't be able oh. to see it that's on FK. Oh, I thought he was picking it up online. Okay, so. He is, but uh, if you have called in. So okay. this is, um, I don't know if you can see that at all. So this is the uh, industrial park, which is pretty much all developed. Okay. Um, one entity owns this, Atlantic Furniture, pretty much everything else is filled up here. Um, and then this was the other spot, which is the old Deerfield Plastics, and there was an empty lot here, which will be a cultivation site. Um, that was the beginning of our meeting tonight about uh, Deerfield Naturals developing this as cultivation. Their retail would be down in this area. Um, and that really left you know nowhere else, other than I'm gonna bring the other larger map um, pull back here. So everything you see in yellow, we'll come back a little bit. I'm going to go back to the camera. I got it. Um, I'll do this. So everything in yellow is in is residential agriculture, um, and you can pull these maps up online too if you're interested. Um, so that's kind of where we allowed cultivation only, um, and. And there's, uh, so we, we, you know, the planning board was thinking about what else could we do? And so the little spot downtown here, we want to look at maybe doing uh, retail, you know, not just in this. So I think what, what people are finding, like Northampton put their retail at the bottom of the town, right next to the highway. So everybody gets off the highway. Lots of people are going there. And then they get back in the car and get on the highway and leave. And there's no economic development to downtown. No one's going to buy a burrito after or an ice cream or whatever else they might do. So to put things out of the way, um, you know, we have alcohol sales right in the center of town. We have bars in the center of town. I think um, to, to treat this product um, so much differently than that um, is, is uh, short-sighted as far as economic development. Not to say that any of these places would work, but with the way things are changing and we don't know in five years how marijuana will be sold, and maybe, maybe it would make sense to have a spot in the center of town where people could develop a defunct building and put, put a retail store in there and, um, and then they'd have access to pizza and the other, other places, the other stores and, and you know, gain economic development instead of coming up off the highway like they do the Yankee Candle and never come to the center of town. So it might be a draw to the center of town. So um, the little spot in purple is the one we already have. Um, this larger one in purple, we would maybe open up for both um, cultivation and retail sales. Um, and then you can see a little tail end of this red here, which goes up. This is pretty much up by the butterfly shop. So that's again, a little bit more of our, this is the red spot is our commercial district. So maybe there would be retail there, but not cultivation. Um, and then there's the train area up here in the old quarry. Maybe there's some spot up here that could be for cultivation in a, you know, in a, in a um, Either a building that's large and run down can be fixed up and used again for cultivation, um, but you wouldn't have retail up here. This wouldn't be a retail kind of thing. It would be just mainly cultivation. So, um, so we also have to look at: is there anywhere else in here? Um, you know, right about here is where we have our existing um, cultivation. So, is there is there anywhere in this RA district that it makes sense to allow cultivation? and processing in the same place. Um, 
and uh, and manufacturing in the same place. So, but but really not fill up the rest of our area. Kind of limit that since we realize now mainly it's not farmers doing this stuff. It's it's a commercial business that's going to put up a building with all the security, all the air handling, all that stuff to deal with the with the odors and 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 just to make sure the site's uh, secure. So. I think the main thing is to really kind of hear from this select board what, what wishes you want um, between, in this. And it, I want it to just be my decision. I, I you know, want to hear what, what the board thinks about any of this and, uh, and then collaborate with the planning board, get one bylaw we could get together and, and take on uh, onto the public at town meeting. So my arm's tired. Of yep. Dave, did you have anything you wanted to say? No, it's just that, like I said, the uh, the last time we uh, addressed this, we had the, okay. you know, the town has approved overwhelmingly the marijuana district. Yeah. And the residents knew it was, uh, that was when it was just medical. It was before it was legalized in the state. And, you know, quite frankly, this town needs some revenue sources coming in. Yep. And this provides it. You know, we have hopefully the solar project coming in at the landfill. Uh, yep. Between that and this, I mean, that could create quite a gap in what we're expecting for a shortage over the next few years. Yeah. Yep. It really could. I think, you know, the difference between cultivation only at that one facility we have now and cultivation and uh, manufacturing or processing of, of the material it is a big a significant difference it makes a big difference on our taxpayers and you know and you know we have our everyday budget that we deal with every year it's tight every year we're looking at ways to cut how do we make it work um and but that's not even addressing the massive expenditures for you know the sewer projects or um, the unfunded mandates of the, of the OPEB that we need, you know, we, we're not really funding that. I mean, we need to be, take some of this revenue source coming into town that we could, we could peel off, you know, it's kind of like paying your 401k. You don't really know it's out of your check because it automatically goes out of your check. We, we steer this money towards some of this stuff um, that, it, that is going to be a massive load on our, our kids when they're sitting here running this, you know, 20, 30 years from now that OPEB cost of our retirees and, and the expense of the health care for them is, is immense. I mean, the liability is millions and we're putting 40,000 a year away. I mean, it's just nowhere near enough money. And, and with, the, with the level of co you know, money that would come in from these things, we do have interest in town for, for cultivation, um, for, for processing. I, I think we take advantage of it. There's nobody else knocking down the door saying, we want to give you a ton of money and build jobs here. And, um, you know, we'll, we're listening. I'm happy to listen, but I think the impact is very small um, for what we already have. And the security is good. We have good, um, you know, our chief looks over all this stuff. They have good plans. We ev Everybody that has come in and put a host agreement together has hired very good security. Um, you know, John Carney, Gilmore, Blake Gilmore. I mean, they, they've really looked at the security and making sure it's safe for Deerfield. Um, and again, I just think it, it, it gets a different treatment than alcohol does. And we, we have plenty of that in town. So, um, and the other thing I'd like to add is, you know, if we add the manufacturing component to this, quite frankly, people going down the street won't see any difference than what's mm -hmm. there right now. Not a bit. Not it's not bit. like we're adding to the footprint, adding to, you know, noise or anything like that. Anything like that. Yep. It's just that we're creating another revenue source for the town that it's could hidden. be done here and yep. not in one of the neighboring towns. They're going to move. Significantly, they, they don't, significant they don't impact on the re on the revenue that we're going to collect. Significant. Yeah. The different. I mean, there is some with cultivation. There's no question, but it's significantly more when you add the uh, processing. But if you were a business and you could go in the next town over and do processing, manufacturing, and cultivation, why would you stay in Deerfield? Yeah. I mean, the expense is the same. The footprint's the same. You're just limiting their ability to make money and give it to you. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. So, I mean, it does make sense to make sure that it's not rampant through the RA district. And, and we do take care of our, of our um, cultural 
you know, the aspects of what the town looks like and you don't want this stuff all over our good farmland. And so I understand that need to want to kind of limit that back from what we had originally, as we've all learned. But I think there is a common ground there we could find. So um, I'm hoping to kind of keep this mo moving, um, see if there's any other things that you have in mind that, that we're not seeing or you'd want us to negotiate together. I mean, I'd love to have you at the next meeting. All of us, we do a joint meeting together with the planning board to kind of lay out these issues. So. Um, and find some ground. I'm waiting for one other, uh, some other information on maps about where in the RA district we might uh, be able to open up or, or keep versus, um, you know, just doing that one spot along five and 10. Because um, I think it's important to deal with the, the facilities we have and not completely limit any economic development all over town, but it's gotta be done smartly. So yep. I'll have more information shortly within a week, I think, on that. And then um, I know the planning board wants to meet and kind of get this ball rolling too. And, and Chris has been great. He's been doing a good job kind of taking these notes and feeding the information back, so. You know, Deerfield has been in the forefront for a lot of this stuff. And yep. it's just, you know, uh, we're a progressive town. Um, yep. And quite frankly, you know, if you want to go way back on McCullen Farm Road, we had the largest still in Western Mass. Is that right? Dave, I, love, I just want you to know I love you for your historical <laughs> concepts all the time and, and what yeah. what you and give us that perspective every time. It's wonderful. Yeah. So, you know, Deerfield has always been kind of right there, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Granted, right. my family distributed some of it in their fuel trucks, but you know, <laughs> that's that's another story. That They're all gone now, story. so it's safe. Another town. <laughs> Um, oh. So that's really, I mean, uh, so in your packet, you do have the proposed bylaw from the, uh, from the planning board's perspective. Um, I think some of that language I would like to propose some change on. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. Um, and then we did talk, you know, about changing the, ta the table of uses in there. And we, we talked about making the, um, uh, allowing the retailer in the MO2 section. There's an MO1 and an MO2 section. So MO1 um, is mainly just cultivation, uh, or, or excuse me, just retail uh, and independent testing laboratory. MO2, you can do kind of everything with a special permit. Everything, all of this is always with a special permit. It always goes through planning and site plan review and all of that stuff. So it's not just like an automatic okay anywhere. We've not allowed it in any of our uh, expedited uh, permitting areas. So, um, so that's that. Um, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get back in touch with with, with the change that we have and I, keep you. I'm I'm a hundred percent supportive, um, Trevor. Anything that's going to keep our is going to generate more revenue and keep our taxes um, stay stable is and and not have us have budget cuts is going to be huge. Great. That's great. Thank you. Um, um, we just have a couple. Uh, the only thing left is that we need to look over the make zoning board comments. Um, so I have larger, you know, discussion on that, and it's probably not the spot to do it. But, you know, I look at so I look, you know, sometimes we're asked to comment on this stuff and you wonder, okay, we, you know, we support our, our building inspector he's, uh, and commissioner and he's making the, the rulings based on what our bylaws say. And that's what, that's what the town has asked him to do. And I fully support his decisions on all of that. It that doesn't mean that the zoning is necessarily, in my view, accurate or what I think maybe we'd want to change at some point. It, so this is just a, a discussion for the side that um, I, I would love a bigger discussion on zoning changes on a whole, not really as it relates to this, but sort of as it relates to this, because this is bringing some things to the forefront that I, um, I think need to change. Um, but, um, but just, I want to say straight up, I support our building inspector. He's reviewing these these bylaws and saying, you know, he's cut calling, you know, strikes and balls fairly and it, it is what it is. Um, and, and then it's up to the zoning board to say if they want to veer away from that or not. Um, but they would be setting a precedent. So um, 
you know, the question on the first one is one, are we going to do these one at a time, like one steam mill road? Um, it looks like they're looking to do a, um, a remodel and, you know, kind of, there's a little cottage on a lot right now and they want to do a bigger addition and kind of remodel the house and make it a little nicer. Um, but they have no frontage because, you know, the lot is, is fairly small and they have, they do it, they have a shared driveway. So their property has no frontage on any road. So that's why I think, um, Kate's saying it, you know, it's a non-conforming lot. Um, it just, they're, they're, you know, and, and I guess what I, I'm getting at in some of this is that I think the, the town's zoning bylaws requiring 200 feet of frontage and 60,000 square feet for a building lot limits, um, it, it creates, you know, it, it goes against climate change and it, um, because you, you want to, I think you'd want to allow smaller houses on smaller lots. So you weren't, um, you weren't requiring these people to mow massive amounts of lawn, um, or, um, you know, have gigantic homes or gigantic homesteads. I mean, I just think we can use our land, uh, better, you know, there'd, there'd be a better use. And it also comes down to social, um, you know, economics that, you know, you're keeping the unattending consequence of requirements like those are that uh, people who don't have as much means aren't able to move into town and build a home. And I think the town would do well to diversify its, its economic. Um, what, what you're talking about, Trevor, what you're talking about, Trevor, is doing some, I think, is your conservation um, kind of, we need to incentivize conservation planning mm -hmm. in the sense that um, you have higher density located in less desirable land. Yeah. And I think that's what we're trying to do with the healthy soils analysis, if we get this MVP, is to identify, because um, we have we have in our town the top 5% in the entire world of soil. Best, best and the soil. Whole, whole idea is to do identify um, the areas that should stay in agriculture, that's yep. this top 5%, plus some of the land that has been degraded and that should be restored, mm -hmm. and then identify places where you want development, but you incentivize higher density development. Yeah. If you yeah. just remove your 200, you know, your 60,000 square feet and your 200 foot frontage, all you're going to have is houses lined up along the street. Instead mm -hmm. of every 200 feet, it will be every 50 feet or whatever. Yep. I mean, what you have to do is you incentivize the density in a less desirable area that costs more money to maybe develop initially rather than right off, right off the road. Yeah. And, and so it's like, you know, cookie cutter and, and you have no open space left. Right. But so what you do, I mean, that's what we're trying to do with the soils analysis, healthy soils analysis is to come up with what, what areas, what, and it's down to the parcels, what mm -hmm. parcels do we, we prioritize for food production? Yes. What, what ones we work to restore and then where do we promote development? And the idea is to have an objective uh, look at the town that is truly based on data so that the emotions of it are, are left exactly. a little bit on the table. Because as soon as you talk about t changing the zoning and doing all that, it's, it's okay in someone else's neighborhood, but not in my neighborhood. Well, and, and that's... And that's what you're trying to do is come up with data that shows where we really should have development. Absolutely. And and I and I look at one of the houses that I um, you know supported changing was there was not uh, not quite enough land just as you go on Lee Road over the 91 bridge, mm -hmm. you know those two houses were yes. were put there in really less than they were slightly less than the proposed you know our zoning requirement yep. but those you couldn't do anything with that land they're great that's nice not couple um, of homes. it wouldn't be productive at all and so that's where you would put development and yep. and so 
you know, I supported a non-conforming to our, you know, or supported the zoning for that to, to go ahead. So when you talk about that, I, I look at this one still uh, steam mill road, River yep. Road, it's non-conforming, but there's already a house there. So, right. and there is, there is, you know, it's far enough away from the property lines that you're not infringing upon, you know, the, the current neighbors or future neighbors. Right. So it's, you know, go ahead. You know, I don't really have a problem with that, but the, the couple other ones uh, like well, H Sherman drive, you know, is a very small addition. It is uh, a very small addition. I, you so, know, I, I mean, I don't really have a problem with that per se, but we, we had just, you know, you're taking a non-conforming lot and you're building up closer to the property lines. And actually we had one in old Deerfield, not, you know, just not too long ago it was really the same thing. He was already within, he was right on the property line and he wanted to develop it more. And mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing else really around him, you know, only one house, but, uh, you know, you are getting closer to other, you know, persons. Yeah. Homes. So, so I feel like this lot, though, at a Sherman, the only thing, you know, it's already got a piece of property, you know, if you look and at it's the got floor plenty plan, of the woods dining room on is already there, and so is the kitchen, and all you're doing is kind of filling out the space in that corner. And it's right, not and there's really enough trees around that you shouldn't be offensive to the neighbors. So no, I don't even though so I was not really supportive of the one in Old Deerfield because that was right on the property line, this one seems to be okay. I, I just and, you know, I don't like to, I don't like us to do foot. too much piecemeal. I don't right. know how you feel, Dave, on this, but well, um, let me turn the lights on so you can see me, but um, <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> The, uh, you know, it's, I fully support what Bob's doing because it, it doesn't meet the criteria of our current bylaws. Right. And we've got to be careful every time we make an exception. I know. That's why I'm saying. The precedent. And people can come back on us on those precedents if we're not careful, yep. which right. quite frankly is happening to us right now and costing us a lot of money. But so, this, um, you know, Originally, you know, it's like the frontage required on North Main Street is what, 75 feet? Because it has sewer and water. The, the other lots have more frontage and everything because of the requirement of a septic system and a well. And that's why those, those square footages were put where they were. Um, so those are things that, you know, between Bob and Dick, they have to take a full consideration of a well and a septic system that would go along with that. Because if you're taking a thousand square foot place and making an 1800 square foot, you're adding bedrooms. So it needs a larger septic system. You're system. impacting the space, right, David? Yeah, so we, those are things that can be consideration. And if you've got, I mean, it's hard to kind of zoom. I don't know where I'm looking here, but if you look at this lot, it's fairly large. Yeah, you know they've got. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm I know. I, that I, we got to make sure that you. all this stuff is being evaluated completely. I agree. I agree. And yes. you know, here again, you know, it's just that you know. I think I I go along with what you originally said. We have I, to go by what Bob, I is agree. saying. Yep. And then you know, if it has to go to the zoning board or the CBA, mm -hmm. you know, we go that way. Um, yeah. But you know, we've got to avoid setting too many precedents without changing bylaws. That's what I was no. talking originally. Like we should look at changing bylaws originally to kind of relook at this and make sure like this small little addition on a, on a pretty sizable lot. Um, you know, I don't know. Yeah. If you just look, I, I know Casey's got her hand up, so I'll, I'll be quiet. And listen. I thought she was just, no, no, no. Us. You guys are talking about the same thing. Here's my thought. Jennifer and I have lots of thoughts. I have lots but... of thoughts. <laughs> But it sounds like it's a bigger conversation in terms of evaluating if the current zoning bylaws match where you want to be. Right. What do you want in your community? Do you want right. to open up smaller lots so that you can get more buy-in to build out a more, um, a wider range community? Like, 
Do you want to have more different types of people be able to buy into the community? So how do you create zoning that allows for that? It allows exactly. for a wider audience and a wider buy-in. Because get, Deerfield's a bedroom community. We have access and, to a lot of things, but it can be expensive. And getting to the last uh, item that's on here is the, uh, the other building, you know, they're looking to, um, and I think our zoning should encourage um, multi-generational living because that really is the, it's what was here many years ago. You had a farmhouse, you had grandma and grandpa living there, you had the kids living there and they were help raising the little kids. And, and we've gone to this, I mean, I've been in the building industry for 25 years and I've seen, I've done my share of tons of McMansions, um, you know, 5,000, 6,000 square foot for two, for a couple with no kids um, on a giant lot. And, you know, and they went through the roof that we, we built so many of those throughout all of Western Mass. And, and then if you look at nowadays, you really need mom and dad, you know, maybe, maybe dad passed away, mom needs help, she had her hip done or or they're getting older and they can't deal with a big house anymore. We want them I'm to move in. You. Yeah, they want to move in with, um, you know, with their kids. And maybe they're in Florida for part of the year, Arizona for part of the year. And they come back. They don't want a gigantic house to maintain. They want to come back and be with their family, with their grandkids. And I think it's important that we look at our zoning for one economic um, ability for people of all economic scales to be able to live in our community yes. because they add to diversity. That's what Jennifer just diversity. said. Increase and, your and diversity by yes. making things affordable. Absolutely. But and you have to address looking. your zoning challenges there. And so that makes people uncomfortable. Well, that's okay. She can I talk to this better than I can. <laughs> but I, 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 I'm okay with making it's a change. That what makes them uncomfortable. That's what makes them uncomfortable. That's why it's important to have data. That's why it's important to have data mm -hmm. so that it is, you can have a decent conversation and hopefully in the next week or two, we'll find out if we have that MVP money. Yeah. And so I, I think it's important. One thing that people. let it, I think there's a, an element here that I think Jennifer could say something to having worked and lived in communities that have a greater diversity in their populations and working directly in a land use office to yeah, so see this. So the, the, when I look at these projects and with my experience working in that community, it, it shows the change of people's economic statuses and how it's challenging for people to afford their homes. Mm -hmm. So what they want to do is they want to make accessory apartments and they want to have family members live with them and they also want to have this extra income. And that's in order for them to pay the taxes in this evolving world. And how do we keep people in Deerfield? And how do we make it affordable? And how can we change our zoning bylaw in order to make those changes and also have it keep its charm? Yes. Right? Yes. So mm -hmm. it's also looking at recently, what's non-conforming? Is it the area? Is it the frontage? If you are making it non-conforming because you're you're making it more non-conforming because you're adding uh, an addition onto your house but it's not affecting the non-conformity of the frontage right and that's something that bob would decide whether or not he is going to approve or whether it's because it's not making it worse or detrimental to the neighborhood so you know these are the decisions that bob is going to make to say, yes, we're going to allow this type of development or no, we're not going to, you know, make this and he's going to make a stand on it. And that's going to be his decision because he's the zoning enforcement officer. Correct. Based on what our bylaw says. The Currently. further thing is, is how the planning board and other members of the community are going to change the zoning bylaw and go through it, which they should, whether the COG helps us or whether they do it themselves mm -hmm. in order to take out some things that need to be changed. They, right. They just do. Yeah. And, and that's what a public hearing process allows people to chew on that. Yeah. And it goes through a series of things. So if the board is interested in seeing something like that happen, you have the ability to set that charge out there and say, hey, look, we want to yeah. see some changes because we see a need for diversity. We see a need to add some affordability and to allow 
families to be closer just for the economic effectiveness and Absolutely. for the health care. I have right. to take care of my mother-in-law. So I told yeah. my husband in no uncertain terms, we need to have a place for your mom to live because right. she's going to be there within 10, 10 years. Yeah. And then you and, just, and so that's it. How do you work that? Yeah, you just establish right. it ahead of time so that we it's been thought out and you can talk to right. other communities and get different ideas of how to make that happen and how to keep the integrity of what? Of the community. community. Yes, of the community. Of the right. community. Yeah. But also not making it so difficult. I mean, I fought, fought, fought against that in the former community of people just saying, you want to make it difficult for for change. And that's not it. It's like you right. want to keep it and you want to help people through the process and to and to make a change that's good for your community right. and for the members that are in it. And so, um, and, and also there's, there's something to be said about um, people knowing the zoning bylaw and how it changes over the right. years. Yes. So I'm just learning that because something could have changed and not have been followed through in the process. Yep. And so keeping that's up one of the challenges, making sure that it's, it's, it's where it needs to be and that we're following the law. I agree. I yeah. agree with that. And okay. that's, that's why, why, I <laughs> why I want to reiterate, it's more important to adjust our bylaws mm -hmm. instead of making exemptions. I yes. Every right. time you make an exemption, you're opening that door for something to bite you in the butt. Absolutely. Yep. And I support, that's why I said originally, I support Bob's decisions. I support him as our zoning officer. I think he's following the laws that are there. And, and he's it, not doing it in a box, Trevor. Absolutely. He's actually asking for help and we're facilitating yes. that. This and I is complex. fully support all of that. I, I do. I, I think he's doing the right comment, thing. Right? That can be a comment on this. That, that That's what she just said. So this could be part of your comment is why create exceptions? Why not start to address the fundamental infrastructure in the bylaw that isn't, that isn't solving people's problems. Right. It isn't meeting residents' needs because yes, right. you just it's identified not. what residents' needs are evolving to. All they of are. You. They're changing and we want to keep up with that. And so maybe that's the comment. I think that I think that is on on really all I mean all of these is that I think you know each one of them in their in their own right I I don't you know I'd like to see the house with an in law you know I I I think that's important I think that's the future of how we're going to survive together as as a community and you know just as a nation is we need to support our elders and we need to support our kids and um, we need to, we need more intergenerational living, um, and then and then the other um, you know I I don't see an issue with a four season room that barely changes the footprint at all uh, on a on a pretty decent sized lot with 150 on one side and 83 on the other. Um, but again, that's I know it doesn't because it doesn't meet the bylaw now. So I I don't know what my and the sad thing is. about that one, Trevor is that if that wasn't connected to the house, yep. they wouldn't even need a building permit. If they just didn't connect it to the house. Got yeah. it. Yep. So I don't know. It seems kind of strange. So um, this is why we pay the building commissioner. What's that? <laughs> this is why okay, we pay so, the building commissioner. Yes, exactly. So, no, so I, I get, are we okay yeah, just that. putting the comment that we support the building commissioner and um, that we're, you know, we're interested we're in seeing changes to the bylaws to make everyone's residential living more effective. Yes, I agree. Yeah, that, that I mean, makes that's sense. Really what Our, I no, we, we just say we're going to support the process because it, it has to be a process. We have to have some data. And yeah. because what happens is if you, if you don't put enough thought in it, and then you're going to have development that's going to be look not what we anticipate. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I mean, you know, the part of it is we do have to preserve some of our farmland um really Absolutely. it's a food security issue so yes the first step if we can get a, a parcel by parcel analysis of the value of of the parcel for food production um and then or or renovating it for food production then then where we should be placing development i think is really important first step and hopefully we'll get funded for that because that, I mean, that does, is going to cost us some money. 
So how do we go about after that? How do we go about this process of looking at these bylaws? I mean, is that something that we would ask Well, first you have to, board? Well, 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 it's not, it's, it's where do you put, where do you put development, put Trevor? And then you see what, what when well, you, when you have. I'm just, the example we have right now, that is a. Yeah, but you just can't, you can't open up zoning and, and just say I, you're going to. I understand gonna... that. I'm just thinking like, I, I'm looking at the the lot that's there is a rocky kind of hillside that's not really desirable for farming. So that's kind of one of the areas of an example of, you know, where in our town. Right. But so, so then you look at the lots that are, that you want similar. to have development happen yep. and then you develop the zoning that would incentivize development to happen there right. because by the fact that it's on a slope or it's rocky or, you yep. know, there's some other. You're not farming it. it. Yep. Right it's not easy to develop. So you have to have some kind of incentive in your zoning that will encourage the development to happen there mm -hmm. and to make it attractive to develop. And so you just don't open it up because all that's gonna happen is all your farmland is gonna get developed. Oh yeah, no, I get it. It's gotta, so, like you said, it's gotta be relatable so to that. So by that having data. a parcel by parcel um, analysis, you see where, where where you could tuck in some zoning and then you write the zoning to incentivize those areas. But if you don't know where the areas are, then you can't, right. you can't write a zoning that would be effectively incentivizing. We yeah. have conservation, um, you know, uh, development, you know, um, subdivision plans already, but no one's ever used it. And the reason why is because it's a generic, um, you know, here you build your houses in a cluster here and then you save this this amount of property but there was never enough incentive for anyone to use it and it's right. been on the books i don't know so Karen, long long time it can go into our dimensional charts and it could be you know put by the zones and it doesn't have to mean farmland but it could be on you know a single family i mean there's different ways of putting it but you can right. put the dimensional chart and have criteria that's specific and then have footnotes that go along with it. So okay. I mean, that's all something that everybody would need to look at and look at what, what the need is and what right. people want, but not take away from the farmland, not make it so like, right. oh yeah, you can put a subdivision in here or you can, you know, right. build something that's six stories high or, you know, there's, you know, I just all like criteria. to see that process move along and I'm not sure who does that, whether it's planning, zoning, who or should or could. Or it could be something, right, Casey, that the COG could help? Yeah. So what would be uh, optimal is to have the information that Carolyn's talking about in sync with development of a review process yeah. using a group that can help us understand where our zoning is now and where right. we would like it to be. Yep. And that's, that's exactly not right. a one, that's not a snap decision. That's a right. process, like Carolyn said. Yep. Um, the planning board actually moves zoning changes along. Like they physically are the, the group that submits zoning changes to town meeting. Yep. That could start with the select board <laughs> saying, hey, we would like to see a reevaluation of our zoning. And the reason that I held my hand up before was we have a lot of anachronisms in our zoning that we need to fix. Yep. So overall, we have a larger zoning project we need to handle. Yep. And it's something that's difficult for a group of community members to do because we're not planners we're not right. zoning officials exactly so uh -huh. getting some outside help would be useful the issue with that is we're going to have funding issues for quite a while and for a long time the state has been promising that they're going to make significant changes to chapter 40a i think it's 40a right jennifer 40b 40b, 40B. So they're going to make significant changes they haven't come to fruition but if you recall, when we were sitting in those meetings at the COG Council, Trevor, yes, they warned us every year it was it could come up. So conceivably, yep. those could come up in the next two years. If yep. the select board comes out and says, look, zoning, ZBA, and planning board, we see issues that need to be addressed in the zoning bylaw. Please consider how we would start that process. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Put the yep. charge out, let them figure out how it, it could be approached and come back to us. So right. we can figure out how we could fit it into a budget. Like okay. how do we fit this together? Right. Because Carolyn's, as Carolyn said, there's intersects here. There's a mm -hmm. farming intersect. 
there's a climate change intersect. So how do we fit all those pieces together yep. in an approach that can be all encompassing and forward thinking? Because here's the other problem. We haven't changed that master plan since before I came to work here the first time. Mm -hmm. That master plan's over 21 years old. Remember, Carolyn? It's time. It's because we've done it twice and I've chaired it twice. Yes. I have no energy to do it a third time. That's okay. Nobody's asking you to. <laughs> and also the state for all their talk about changing 40B and all their talk about helping with done it yet. Encourage, encouraging housing. Guess what? We still pay for our schools the same way and they are underfunding us more than ever. And when I first was a select board, we were protesting 36% of the cost of educating our kids. Guess what? It's now about 20% or less. And this year it's going to be far less because of our COVID expenses. So guess what? It, it, you know, t we can talk about housing all we want, but if you're not bringing in commercial development, if you're not bringing in revenue, revenue. the town will go bankrupt yeah, when you absolutely. just have housing. The and reason why our finances are good is because about a third of our tax base is farmland, a third of our tax base is commercial industrial, and a third is housing. That our, we have, our residential housing has been fairly stable. And as soon as it becomes not stable, our, right. our, our school trouble. costs have been going up as it is anyway. And it's not sustainable. It makes it more unsustainable and it just accelerates the pace of our taxes and our, and our not being able to be financially and fiscally um, stable. So right. we can talk about changing the zoning all we want. It comes down to the state not funding education properly so you can afford more diversity in your housing stock, more and more change and growth. So I need it. I've, I've not volunteered to do another master plan. <laughs> I'm not invested in, in a lot of movement that way because there's no, no change in how they finance education except from local property tax. And we can't afford it and still be fiscally stable. So mm -hmm. One of the things, like I said, was to start this Healthy Soils Initiative parcel by parcel assessment so that maybe we can generate some money through the you know, carbon containment, um, joining in with Conway and Waitley and, and, and trying to put again a parcel, you know, the forest market, carbon market is, is fantastic because you have to generate new revenue sources if you're gonna meddle with yeah changing your housing stock you have to keep our balance and this is you know this goes back when i was on the planning board in the early 80s and we've t we did open space plan we did the master plan all this stuff comes down to balance we've been very careful to balance what's happening in our town and we do need to change and update our zoning and we do have to take in consideration diversity of housing stock and yeah. all that stuff. But we need to get senior housing in and senior housing yeah, on a housing smaller machine. scale yep. addresses our need for our seniors to stay in the community. And then our housing talk, current housing stock naturally changes over to another younger generation. Right. So it's important that we, we focus on senior housing that has been unbelievably frustrating to me. And I've been working since 1999 on this, but you, thousands of hours right. into it, and we still don't have senior housing. You and it's also just tie in those seniors that want to, you know, maybe live with their kids. So right, that's a. So this is where so we draw it right aging, back to zoning. Aging in place is part of this, it's and all it a big just circle. Yeah. At, right, and it's just incredibly frustrating. And so, again, you want to do a gradual kind of thing and so if you had a 20 or 30 unit senior housing you would take care of the critical needs of our of our seniors that need to move into a more um, affordable easier place and yeah. give them a good um, they not forcing them to leave the community which is horrible right. at right. your end of your life you have to leave your community it's just gross yeah. and then you know, and then your, but your housing stock turns over naturally. And, and so you get the younger families in and it's a stable transition. So mm -hmm. 
it's not that I'm against all this, but you have to do this in a very thoughtful manner to make sure that we stay fiscally stable and our, our taxes and our, you know, the schools and budgets, yep. we can still try to keep, I mean, we know, Trevor, you know, Dave knows, you've, we've been here through enough budgets mm -hmm. that we can hardly afford our school budgets already. They're, yep. they're creeping up towards 70% and it's just, they grow faster than the municipal budget. The municipal budget has been fairly stable for years and we operate every year on really less and less. And we just, you know, it's hard to cover the costs. And, and we have to, you know, we have to be thoughtful about that. And that's, that's why, you know, when again, you change your zoning, you, you, you have to keep your, your zoning, right. like, well, like the marijuana zoning, anywhere you can change that and get right. some revenue. That, you know? that generates revenue. Well, so that's the kind of zoning change you want to promote at the moment. And then try to figure out ways that we can steadily work towards this, you know, housing diversity or whatever right. and, and increase our housing stock. But, you you got to do it in a way that's not going to negatively impact our finances. Of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, so I think the first thing I'm hearing you guys say is we need to think about how to encourage a response. We got to get commercially. Senior housing, well, housing, senior housing isn't going to solve the problem of lowering taxes. So commercial res a response to commercial need yes, sounds like initially. it's the first thing. Right. And then we source how we could collaborate on senior housing. So one thing that happened in Goshen, they did put senior housing in. There was the elements that they had to have. They had to have at least one, one, um, they worked with Hill, they worked with a Hilltown group because Turner's trying, didn't have not, the capacity well, we don't to want, handle senior housing issues. We don't want market market price senior housing we want subsidized senior housing market but price that's the is, thing is you is, have to go through a process and the towns small towns like us we don't have the capacity for that we don't have the the understanding of the w wider market how do you pull the elements that can make it subsidized by helping build the place that the town doesn't have to build so there are elements that i had to learn about when i was ashfield in ashfield because it came up Goshen did this, but they did this on a small scale and they did it very carefully using another group that had more of an understanding of how they had accomplished it in small communities in the hill towns. And it's just small amounts of housing, but that housing adds up and does the exact thing that you're asking for. The most important it's thing just, is we, we are looking for subsidized housing. So if, if you're an elder and it's mostly elder women, if, if you're an elder, you can live there for a third of whatever your social security check is. And that, that's the kind of housing we're looking for, not, you know. But that's a wider conversation than market, that's a bigger challenge. Market priced housing, plus you have your condo fees, plus you. So can, and so well, we're not. That's the one we're trying to solve. Can you, can you fit all that comment on the page? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that all those comments fit on the page. All right. Yeah. Well, maybe it's just a question of we Listen, need to address some zoning okay. issues. Mm -hmm. What yeah. we need to do, what we need to do is set some priorities. And I, I think what has happened um, with the COVID, we've all been so um, just flooded mm -hmm. daily. Everybody's working 50, 60 hours a week on this stuff. And we're just sick of this already. And we have a few more months to go for sure. Um, we got to figure out what we're going to do because regular business hasn't stopped. Um, I'm really discouraged that um, we, you know, we, we had such good momentum coming into this year for climate change um, at our climate day. Thank God we got it in <laughs> mm -hmm. before COVID hit. That would have been so, hit. yeah, that would have been so discouraging, but we never had any follow-up and um, we need to do some, uh, setting some priorities besides COVID. And I'm, I know that's not fair to you, Casey, because every day you and Jen spend, um, you know, you're just trying to catch up and keep things running. But um, if we could, if we could focus in on some stuff, set some priorities, at least look at things that are important and that we need to not forget about. So here's really the issue. Here's it. the intersect. We need to set priorities so that we can focus in here because COVID does take up 50% of our time at least. Yeah. Um, and we're not being effective 
staff isn't being effective if we can't get priorities from you guys. So I wasn't even thinking in terms of priorities for a long period of time. I'm thinking in terms of priorities for the next quarter because well, there's some things that quarter. we have to I deal with. Quarter. No, yeah, I said there's quarter, things we have to deal with. I, I, so, you know, I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything month to month just because, um, you know, just trying to get COVID schools just, open and or not is, is, I mean, it's just, I mean, we have to do that in the next month. And then, then we're going to start talking about special town meeting and then we're going to be talking about the budget season. So well, one thing I think we need to talk about, this is why I sent an email out. We need to talk about special town meeting sooner rather than later. Because yeah. after having a conversation with Chris Curtis this morning and finding out about a problem over at the elementary school yesterday afternoon, we probably need to address some budget issues. So the MVP grants will probably come out in the next one to three weeks. Chris isn't sure. Um, so we no, had a commitment. Heard the same thing. I had heard the same thing. So there so was a commitment on the part of the board to chase that money if we could. If there were significant issues in ventilation that we have to fix over at the school, that's gonna be a lot of money. Darius and I talked about that this afternoon. Um, we do have some land articles that were slated to be dealt with, and there were some budget issues that you all wanted to deal with, um, and things that have come up since we passed the budget. So I think we really have to narrow down one item of priority is to develop what we would look for for a special town meeting because the other thing that I need to tell you before we all break is um, we need to do a layout hearing for the additional feet to add to Merrigan Way. And so- I was just gonna say my number one priority, let's get the, the property ready to sell. Would and so here's in, in order for us to do that, that, we have to have a layout hearing and right. go to town meeting. All right, I'm sick of chasing this. We bought the property in September. We were supposed to turn it over in October. Now. I, it's not your fault, Casey, because it's not you had COVID and you came not even you didn't even come until just about March. So we need to make sure that that gets done. So that should be the number one priority. Dave or Trevor, do you have any problems with that? I don't. That was one of the priorities I gave Casey. Yep. Yep. Okay. I mean, I, I think we got we got to look at that and get that on the market. Um, we had three or four opportunities. Um, people have been really we've tremendously interested let's get it going and get so it here's done. the problem we have to have town meeting in order to do this because we have so, to relay out the road okay so we relay so, out the damn road and get it on the town meeting yes mm -hmm. all right is that, and then we have to not, deal with is, that, a, is that okay with you and uh, trevor yes. and dave yep. okay yeah so all i right. had scheduled i'm going to schedule a layout hearing for the 9th of september because okay, once you do the layout hearing, our bylaws require that the planning board review a layout and they're meeting, the I 14th. think, unless they change it, they're meeting on the 14th. Yep. So what I could do is say, okay, this is the layout the board is going to address on the 9th. We want you to have it in anticipation. Yes. Um, but there's a process. So I was going through the process today so I can figure out in my head what has to be put on paper for notification and planning purposes and publication of information okay. because there's a process that we have to do by the state. Okay, so, so that's our number one, Casey, that's our number one priority. Um, um, Oxford, Merrigan Way. Right, we, get, we gotta get that on the market. Now, number two, Trevor, I, I mean, I hate to ask you to do more stuff, but can you pursue the marijuana stuff. Yes, we, yeah, we need, I've been working on I'll we, work on We need to get that fixed at this mm -hmm. town meeting so that we can generate more revenue. Yeah, that's my goal. Yep. Those, are two, those are two items that will generate new revenue for the town this, yep. you know, um, right away. So mm -hmm. it would be crazy not to do it. Yep. Dave, do you, have a, do you have a problem with that? No. Okay. Not at all. Can I Great. ask a question? Sure. So by you going through and doing that, Trevor, mm -hmm. what's that going to look like? Because it sounded to me that you wanted to talk, wanted to have the planning board discuss with the select board the yes. priorities on the, on the marijuana. So it yes. means that it's going to come back to the three of you. We'll just yeah, have I to just get another meeting. Okay, joint, I just want to make a joint sure. meeting. Yeah, joint okay. meeting with the planning board, if, if they will. Um, I'd love another joint meeting, at, you know, and then we can have them and then we have to have a hearing, you know, they do their meeting, then they have a hearing. And then, so I'm thinking like 
early October sometime for a meeting, but for a town meeting, I know I'm pushing that off, but I, I so I don't know what else no, is. No, I'm thinking we have to, we don't have time. If you, you want to deal with no, marijuana, have, we don't yeah, have time. Have, if you're going to do zoning, right. if you're going to do a zoning change, you got to post it and all that kind yep. of stuff. So yep. you're not going to we're not going to make it by the end of the month. No, so, let's do it in October. We may not even make it in October. So we have to figure that out. This is why I asked, because yeah, I need a framework to fit this hearing schedule in. Unless anything else is pushing us, I think October would be good, um, or, or however long you need to get that done. I mean, and we were also waiting for the state to see what they were doing with finance, and we're, you know, we're starting and to see- And we still don't have a budget. Right. I so, know, we don't have a budget. So, it, I mean, the whole idea of doing September was to base it on what was happening at the state. It sounds like- still well, yeah, but it sounds like the governor is committed to making sure that we're at least level funded. So yeah. for, in our case, we're actually making out better because remember, we were going to get a cut in our yeah. education funds. So we actually are getting a little bit more money, not a lot, be a little okay bit more money year. because yeah. it's level funded. So um, I'm, I'm not so worried about the state budget because he, he did make that commitment and, right. and he's re reiterated at least th three or four times that I've seen it. So um, I've heard him speak. So right. yep. let, let's, let's um, I mean, that was a driving force when we initially right. were planning our town meeting was let's, let's, we've collected our revenue for this year. Let's just go ahead as planned and we'll make adjustments in September. But it looks like we're not, I mean, we're doing really well. And we're, and we're not having to make so many adjustments. So I would rather focus on trying to make sure that we have some revenue stream coming in for the, our next budget year, which um, is going to be very, very difficult for us. Yes. What she okay. said. Yep. No, I, yep, I just, exactly. I, think it's, I think we need to think of, so the priorities, just, you know, get rid of the Oxford pickle, sell that and, and, and do try to do some, generate some money in the marijuana, but also, um, if we can think of anything else that will be revenue enhancing, we need to, that should be the priority because we need to make sure that um, our fiscal 22 is um, going to be stable mm -hmm. and, and we're going to, and we're going to generate enough to make our taxes, you know, yep. state level. Yep. I mean, cause I mean, no one can afford more taxes. Let's oh, just I know. Can I That's hit one last I'm thing? Saying. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but one last thing is, um, Dave Prickett is pretty close to a, a meeting. I talked to him today about, um, you know, kind of a, a full on get together and uh, look at, you know, where we're at with the sewer um, plans. So that's now when you say he where address we're regulations at? at all, Trevor, because I have not heard him heard about it. We don't have any sewer regulations and we handed him a document and I haven't heard a thing. You about can't enforce regulation? the BBC without regulations. All right, so I'll follow up on that. regulations. So if you can oh. ask him, because I haven't heard from him. What document did you give him? We sent him all the regulations that Lisa Mead's office drafted a couple of years ago. The metrics are what we need him to implant. So he needs to, impl he needs to input the metrics that allow us to do enforcements or the metrics that allow mm -hmm. us to measure what impacts are happening that are keeping us from following the well, we can put We can put that on the agenda, I guess, as well, um, for sure. We can reach out ahead of time, but, but that could definitely be a, a, a topic for that meeting. A lot, a lot of the meeting is, is where they're at in the design of phase one. So, okay. and obviously we're wrapping up phase, um, we're not wrapping up, but the, the, the guys are doing an amazing job. I have been posting online the pictures that Keith has been sending. Um, so that, that's been really great. The, the team down there, Waterline, has been fantastic. The one thing that I wanted to make sure that we're following up on, um, money is real cheap. And um, I know we're going to have an infrastructure um, project, you know, a program mm -hmm. in, in, in next, the coming next year. So I want to make sure we're ready that we can take the design that he's working on and just say it's shovel ready and we can apply for it. So, you know, part of mm -hmm. this is he needs to get this ready for some kind of federal program. I think it's yep. worth what I know that we had talked about it earlier. There was some little, you know, a little extra money. Um, I mean, very little extra money. And he would like be able to say that it was shovel ready um, if there was a program available in the next, you know, say four or five months. Yep. Um, six months. And I think that's where you are going to see an infrastructure program. So 
I think we're going to see, you know, plans by them too. I want to make sure that that gets, again, if, if we don't have to pay for it, that is less impact on our taxpayers. So no doubt we yeah. need to make sure that we're focusing on anything that we can, will generate um, revenue or reduce our expenses. So mm -hmm. that I, I want to make sure he does that. I also want to get started on the design for old Deerfield and either what we're doing there and how to, how to get it to, how to get it to South Deerfield if we decide that's the case. But um, yeah, I mean, so I, that may be an item that we either need to fund. Um, uh, Cause I, I did, you know, I think we are going to have some help with that. So, but we may have to, you know, pay for that first or, you know, have them hold off on billing us till it's done or something like that. I mean, I think they're flexible on that, but I think we do need to work on getting that that part going so that we can also take advantage of a larger infrastructure project and Absolutely. then look at mass works and, and, you know, how much, how many jobs will that develop if we can, you know, bring some hookups along five and 10, if that's what we're going to do. Um, so. Because mass works is focused on economic development now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we have to have some kind of story, you know, so it won't story. be hard to develop a story, you know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. back to the old story. I know, it's important, you gotta you tell your grants. story. That's you gotta how you tell your story. Yep. That's right, that's how you get the grants. So yep. um, I wanna make okay. sure we're in a position. Not okay. too many more grants people because- No, I know, we're no, barren. I know. But Casey, so are you, you're kind of getting the idea that our priorities is right now are to generate income, revenue, yep. um, you know, tr we'll focus on that right now. Yeah. Okay. And the, deal with large Dave, infrastructure project of the sewer. Yeah. Dave, Dave, is that okay with you? That yeah. was exactly what he said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This morning. Yeah. All right. Well, see, Good. we're all on the same page. All right. We are. So let's give this a, qu a quarterly we... focus. That means when you guys come in and say, hey, I need this done like right now, <laughs> I look at the priority list and I say, okay, these are the priorities. How am, yeah. What am I kicking off now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you if you make us money, then I'm, 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 that's my priority. <laughs> well, I'm at least capturing some. John's working on some. I'm working yeah. on some. We need you guys are doing great. It's done. You would like money. I what know. I mean. I'm just thrilled That's what with we have staff. to do. I, I think you, you and Jen are doing an amazing job. You know, all of our staff at Town Hall are doing an amazing job. This is very proud, challenging. Very proud of everybody, and they're all doing really good for our residents. And um, I'm just excited to be well, working. Well, having, a, having um, a fully functioning office really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Even if in COVID get, time. Yeah, if we get COVID out of the way, imagine what we could, could do. See? What? Do you hear what she said? Fully functioning. <laughs> I <Yes>. know. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I would call it fully functioning, but that's because I, I, I see things that are falling off the radar screen, and I mm -hmm. said that to David. They will. Yep. And, to, um, and to Carolyn today, because I got my come to God moment this morning. So know, that was the reason I brought this up with Carolyn and with David. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get a chance to talk to you, Trevor. No, that's but, fine. I'm, I'm good. You know, the priorities will yeah. help us. Don't regret it, tasks. Trevor. I yeah. walked in just as it was starting. <laughs> <laughs> Both barrels. I'm glad it was hard to get today. <laughs> yes, I had my passionate moment, as, as Jennifer calls it. Sorry. It's my, oh, I spent my, too much time on the phone today, so I'm my, sorry my, that I missed had, it. Daisy had like, mm. I don't know, so you should see, I tell people, she's on the phone, she's <laughs> on a meeting, she's on a webinar, go away. <laughs> so, <laughs> she did it five later. times today. <laughs> so before my mic goes mute for the 17th time, can I make a motion to adjourn? Hey, uh, public comment? No, we got to do public comment, thank Trevor. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We'll take that too. I'd love to hear public comment. Back in. Okay. Is there anyone that wants to do public comment? I don't know. I guess not. I don't know where Chris Harris is. He usually does a check in. He's here. He's listening. Yeah. Oh, Chris, do you yeah, have any public comment? I guess not. He's so. I, I will second um, Trevor's um, motion to adjourn. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Oh, Chris. <laughs> Thank you for making the comment of no comment. <laughs>
do you need to vote anything about the other comment on the ZBA or did you, you don't need to vote that you're just saying? Yeah, no, it was consensus. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good. We'll let you fill it in. Got I it. think we had- Oh, see, tag you're it, Jennifer. I love it, Monday. <laughs> Monday. All right, take care, everybody. All those Dave in Wolf favor. Or my. Hey, you gotta vote, yeah. Yeah, Dave Wolf or my. Trevor. Trevor, he's Trevor, Trevor's computer died. I'll say I quick and put my mask on because Trevor's coming out to yell I. Okay, everybody, we're adjourned. Thank you. Have a okay. nice evening.